Hey, what's up YouTube? This is KG, this is me, and we are here with a full spoiler review of The Last Jedi. <laughs> I'm ready to talk about this shit. So, this is a fair warning, this will be a full spoiler review. We are going to talk about everything that happens in The Last Jedi, our favorites, our not favorites, uh, the fucking fanboy upset that is happening right now, and all the neckbeards that are out there bitching and complaining about this movie. So, have a discussion below. Yes. But be nice to each other. Please. And we will be monitoring this video. We're monitoring the, the um, comments. So, I will not stand for debauchery. Yeah. So you keep your shit to your fucking Death self. threats to Ryan Johnson or Kathleen Kennedy or... No. Whatever. It's no. not going to be tolerated. No. So we'll boot your ass Like off. the movie, don't like the movie, talk about it, whatever That's you got to do. But do not be an asshole on our channel. You will be blocked. Yep. End of story. Have a friendly discussion. Yes, There's please. nothing wrong with that with a good debate, but don't be a dick. Um, so, overall thoughts. Um, three minutes, go. Three minutes, go. <laughs> um, I really enjoyed this film. I don't know where I put it in my saga yet, but I enjoyed it. I thought it was out of the box. Uh, I thought it was ballsy. I, I thought it was uh, inventive. I thought that it expanded the, the lore of Star Wars and created new things, uh, new ideas, and touched on pretty much all the movies. Uh, brought a little something from each movie and was able to put it in itself. Um, there was a lot of stuff that I wasn't a fan of. We'll, you know, we'll get to that later. But I walked out of the movie pleased, um, a little emotional. Mm -hmm. um, so I think I said it on our live broadcast that uh, I missed Star Wars when The Force Awakens came back. But this movie made me love Star Wars again. Yeah. And uh, this movie, you know, like they say, it's all about choices. And The Force Awakens kind of made you think about things in the past, wanting answers. This movie answers some questions, but at the same time creates new ones. Uh, but it had, it, it, you know, at the end of this movie, it had me thinking about the future of Star Wars, not really about the past. Well, I think that that's the most important thing right now. And I'm excited. Yeah, right? Um, <clears throat> I'm, I'm nervous uh, with it going back to J.J., how Ryan Johnson, Johnson's given the hot potato back to, J, to J.J. Yeah. If J.J. is going to kind of tone it down, I'm kind of nervous about that because you could have, like, it's like going from like a mild pepper to a hot pepper back to a mild pepper. Right. <laughs> you know, that I'm hoping that there's some type of consistency. Uh, not storyline-wise, but just the ballsiness and everything. Um, the expansion of the Force and the galaxy and um, what these characters are doing. That's important to me. So. Yeah. Yeah. What, Other than that, I mean... They're, what they're doing together, like... Yeah. The overall thread but and everything. I really did enjoy it. Uh, we've seen it twice. It's only been out for four days. Mm -hmm. We're probably going to go see it a couple more times. Um, but after each showing, I pick up on new things. And certain things that I didn't like previously, I like. There, There's still stuff that I'm kind of like, eh. You know, and we'll get to that in a, you know, in a little bit here. But overall, I was pleased. And yeah. it was... I'm mad at myself because I theorized too much the last two years about certain things, and I feel like that's the fanboy in me. My, you set yourself up. I set myself up. I think that's my expectations with a lot were of too people. high. Yeah. But I did not come out of this movie disappointed. It actually uh, it gave me something that I didn't know I wanted. Like it was different. Yeah. Like it was. It's not what I was expecting, and that's the thing with this movie. It's not a cookie cutter uh, Star Wars movie. Star Wars movie at all. It's different. It's 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 a little out there, but at the same time, it's still it still feels like home to me. Mm -hmm. So that's all I gotta say about that. So what do you think? <laughs> uh, overall, I thought that it was a, a really good addition to Star Wars. Um, <clears throat> you know, there there are there's really a sense of um, suspension of disbelief you have to have when you're watching any Star Wars movie. Absolutely. Like, literally any Star Wars movie that's ever been made, you have to suspend your disbelief. Otherwise, you're not going to like it. It's just not going to happen. So, to be able to come into this movie and have things pointed out to me that I had assumed already 
about the force and how it works and all of these things. I had actually built that assumption in my head already. I guess I had theorized myself a little bit. Yeah. Um, and for me, that's that story is the important part for me. What is the force? What does it do? You know, how do these characters and these beings interact with each other within this force? And that movie, this movie brought it. Like, that's what I got out of this, and I'm happy that that's where I... Yeah. Because in the end, this story is about the force. Well, it's kind of like how they said in the trailer. It's not going to go the way you think. No. Light, dark, balance. Yeah. Something bigger. That's, I mean, really what I had, what I had taken from it is we are at the same time showing what a gray area. I don't like to use the word gray when it comes to Star Wars because it holds some kind of contention, but it is, the force is neither good nor bad. It's nothing. It has no motives. It has no anything. So for me, this, this movie really kind of just solidified the idea that the user is the choice maker. Mm -hmm. The user is the one who needs to decide whether how they're going to use this this ability to control the force that's all around them. And for me, that was really awesome. And I felt like it it um, tied in a lot of things that are happening socially and politically right now. Uh, you know, talking about the war machine and how. Uh, there really is no good and bad side. But it wasn't. It, it was. It wasn't forced upon, though. No, it, it wasn't. Didn't, it didn't drive it. No, in you. it didn't it at all. I felt. I felt completely um, like I was up to my. Like I had my own um, decisions to make as an audience member of yeah. what I wanted to perceive certain characters as, and and how I wanted to take in that information. And my personal uh, opinion about that was. I am glad that we are now expanding on a, a Skywalker story to include this is a Star Wars movie. And the Star Wars are amidst, amidst the stars yeah. in a galaxy. And there are more than just the Skywalkers in the galaxy. Mm -hmm. And we have to do that because our, our poor old Skywalkers are dying off naturally in real life. <laughs> He can't keep going the way we're going. We yeah. have to expand. I mean, it's kind of like how Kylo says to Rey in the movie. You're no one. You're nobody. You're nobody. You don't have a story. Uh -huh. You're not important to this, but you're important to me. And she's important mm -hmm. to us. Uh, so uh, I, I think that in, in our overall thoughts here, just kicking it off, um, it's important to say that, you know, we're not fly-by-night fans. We're not no. uh, bandwagon fans. We're um, not just m the movie fans either. Um, you know, lore and, and expanded universe stuff and, uh, you know, books and comic books and, and pretty much anything you think of uh, has entered this house. So, Well, I think that that's the, the problem right now because um, this movie is just getting ripped apart online. Some people are not happy with it. But... Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm the, uh, you know, I'm the fanboy with the, uh, unopened toys in my Star Wars room. Uh, I own Expanded Universe Legends material, but guess what? I I'm, I'm a fanboy with an open mind. Yeah. And, uh, what's in the past is in the past. I still have it. I can read it. I can look at it if I want to, but why can't we have something new? And that's where this is yeah. going. I'm excited uh, by what could come. Yeah, I mean, we have to we have to plan for a future of Star Wars. Yeah. If we are going to jump on the Disney train, we have to plan for a future in Star Wars, and that future cannot contain a a Luke Skywalker in the way that we had Luke Skywalker right. in in a, you know a, a Princess Leia in the way we had Princess Leia. Things are going to change. Well, it's They're not going just that. to grow. It's We're real gonna life. Have... It's real life. Yeah. I mean, everyone knows that episode nine, it was supposed to be about Leia. Mm -hmm. Real life ended that. So You're not... now we have to make some hard choices in how that's going to work so, out. So, I mean, I'm not saying that anything's going to happen, but what if something were to happen to Mark Hamill in the next two years? And what you have this huge do? story to where everything that happened to Luke in this movie. Yeah didn't happen it was different or whatever he was still alive or whatever what do you do 
Like, holy shit. How do you work around something like that? It's the thing with dealing with these older characters. You know, Mm. you got to play it safe. And, dude, I get it. Like, the hardcore fans, they wanted what Luke Skywalker did and what he said he was going to do. Wanted to take the lightsaber and take down all the walkers and pull them down with the force and crush yeah. this and crush that. That's what they wanted. Yeah. And Luke even says, is that what you want? That must be what you want. He says that to Ray. Mm-hmm. We didn't get that. We got something different. We got something different, but something that I felt was so rich and organic to yeah. what his character has become. We have to keep in mind, it's been how many years since fucking the return of the Jedi? I mean, like, we, it's not the same Luke we see after well, Battle of Endor. It's I mean, not the that, same guy. That's the thing. They just think that, like, he hasn't done anything in the 30 plus years. <laughs> He's just sitting around He's waiting for waiting. fucking fanboys like, to come back and, and watch it. It's like, do did you cool. not watch the movie? Did you not see the destruction of the Jedi Temple? He tried to rebuild. And yeah, he was powerful in the Force. Mm-hmm. But he felt that he failed. And he went to Octu to die. Yeah. And I don't understand how it's so hard to understand that this is a man full of failure. Mm-hmm. And not only that, not only did he fail, he feels that he felt he failed his apprentice. He failed his nephew. He failed his sister. He failed his best friend, his brother-in-law, Han Solo. Yeah. He failed everybody. He could have very well failed the galaxy in creating Kylo Ren. And, exactly. I mean, how and would you feel? How, you, what would you do? He left. He yeah. he went to. He even says, that, "I came here to die." Uh-huh. But this this like shit that's going on right now of oh the character didn't get any justice and this is not the way you know Luke Skywalker to be. Think about what he did. If you really think about what Luke Skywalker did at the end of this movie, it's one of <clears throat> it is the coolest. The most badass force thing we've ever seen. Yeah. And it took me the second showing to realize that. Yeah. That, holy shit. Yeah. This is big. When you see him there, we he's sweating and he's crying right? and he's shaking. And he's just, just yeah. doing his thing and finally he just fucking gives out. I That's feel like amazing. we got more than what was anticipated. We got more than fucking Battle Royale with the lightsaber. Yeah, can you imagine... Can you imagine? Old ass fucking Luke out there trying no, to find No, and that's fine. They, they could have totally did it. Sure. They, they could have totally okay. did it. But we did but get a what Luke would fight, the so. fucking, these, these, I'm, I don't even know if they're fans. I don't know what they are. Star Wars extremists. <laughs> what the fuck would they do if he was fighting Kylo and Kylo just put the lightsaber through his chest in real life, not force projection? Like, say Luke showed up on crate and did, he pulled the walkers down, yeah. blew shit up. Look totally badass, and then he actually gets into a lightsaber battle with Kylo Ren, and Kylo Ren kills him, puts it through his chest, just like he did his dad. Can you imagine the fucking backlash that that would have had? You cannot make these fans happy, no matter what no. you do. We got what we got, and I'm, I'm okay with it. it. It's I'm good. What it is. And actually, watching it a second time, I loved it, and I thought it was perfect for Luke, because the thing with Luke, Luke. He doesn't kill like that. You know, he wasn't going to kill his dad. He threw his lightsaber away. Fuck this. I'm done. I'm not going to do this. He was willing to sacrifice himself. To He was just done. He was just, this is bullshit. And that's what he did with this movie. In in this movie, he sacrificed himself. And he understood the the greater greater good. good. Yeah. He understood the greater good and what needed to happen. So why isn't this moment, you know. Celebrated? Celebrated just as much as him turning the lightsaber yeah. off and throwing it away in the throne room right. on the Death Star. Or as much as fucking old Obi-Wan fighting fighting Vader. A battle we knew he was going to lose. He was losing. He wasn't going to win this battle. <coughs> but he fights to let everybody else escape. And that's what I has just, happened. You know, I just want to put it out there right now. And I think it's like the last time that I'm going to talk about it uh, on this review. Is that there are certain people you just cannot make happy yeah. uh, that are quote unquote fans in this franchise. You know, you sit there, you know, a couple things. You you love A New Hope and The Empire Strikes Back. Who doesn't? But you don't like Return of the Jedi because of the Ewoks. Fine. 
You hate the prequels. George Lucas raped my childhood. Jar Jar Binks. What the fuck ever. Now, these same people that bash the prequels are bashing the sequel trilogy, the new trilogy that we're getting. Ryan Johnson must die. Ryan Johnson raped my childhood. Or whatever the fuck they're saying. It's all over. All you gotta do is just click on a Star Wars post on Facebook or Instagram and just read the comments. It's fucking sick. It's not just people saying they didn't like it. These are people... Like personal attacks. Sending death threats to Ryan Johnson on his birthday. I mean, it's like, guys, if this is a movie... And, you know, send me your death threats. I don't... I honestly don't care. Uh, I've been a fucking book writer for years now, and I've got plenty of those. So, send me your death threats. I'm really not concerned about what you have to say from, from your fucking basement or your house or whatever the hell you're doing. That being said... I think that there is something about having an open and, and comfortable conversation with somebody, whether they liked it or they didn't like it, and, and bringing those two ideas to the table in an adult and mature manner yeah. uh, that can actually create more of a tight fan base than what we have now. No, and I mean, it's like how they say. That, it, would, it would be so much better. No, no fan base hates the product more than a Star right. Wars fan. I mean, it's right. just, it, it's, it's the way it is, but I've never done that. I mean, I went through a point and it changed a few years ago to where I wasn't, I didn't hate the prequels. I just, I wasn't a fan and I started to appreciate them more and really go beyond like the poopy jokes and the Jar Jar Binks bullshit and the shitty dialogue and really focus on the story itself. And when you get to the story and some of the plot points and everything, like, you know, Attack of the Clones, it isn't, it's probably on the bottom of my list of Star Wars movies, but when you really pull it apart and look at it, it's a pretty good story. Just take away all the shitty romance dialogue. Right. This is the formation of the Empire. Yeah. You, you know, it's if, a necessary If you were to watch this film. linear and not ever yeah. seen the original trilogy, Say you show it to uh, you know a newbie. I, if they were to watch all the films, say they watch the original six, and after Return of the Jedi, they sit there and think, "Wow, that goes all the way back to that." Mm -hmm. I got to see the formation. Yeah, and it's actually a pretty cool story. And I think that's what we're getting with this too. We're seeing a new formation. Yeah, we are seeing a formation not of the resistance, but of a new rebellion. Mm -hmm. A new rebellion and a new regime with with you know supreme leader and anybody who wants to argue that it's not believable that oh we're just rehashing we're just bringing back guess what we're rehashing a lot of things in real life too history repeats itself it's a known fact absolutely it's a known fact I mean what, so, what I mean what did Snoke say to Kylo Ren in the movie you know take your rightful place as what, what do you call it like the uh, Called this the replacement or something of that, like Darth Vader. Yeah. You know, like you said, history repeats itself. Yeah, there need there there is going to be a consistent thread of leapfrog here. You know, one taking over the next. There's always yeah. going to be a greater evil wherever you fall uh, in the universe, whether it's in now or if it's a long, long time ago, a galaxy far away. There's going to be a continual thread of someone wanting all of the power. And right now, that was Snoke. And Kylo Ren. So, so overall, I mean, getting back to it, you, yeah. you liked it. Yeah. Okay. I did. And, and I, I, we, I talked, can, we talked for twenty minutes about whether or not we liked it. Or I, not. I can, uh, I, I can attest that uh, she, Star Wars, has been on her mind a lot the last few days. And normally, we go watch the movie, and we're good. But she's been talking about it. She's following on social media. She wanted to go see it a second time. I'm sure that. She probably wants to go see it again right now. I'm sure she does. I do. I actually do want and to that, see it again. That means a lot to me, and that tells me that they have to be doing something right. Mm -hmm. They didn't do anything wrong in this movie. They had to. It, there it, were things that weren't. Oh, absolutely. That I could have done without. But it was compelling enough yeah. for you to sit there and say, you know what? Yeah. Yeah, I want to go back. Mm -hmm. I want to watch it again. I want to. I, a lot of the reasons why I wanted to watch it again was because. I wanted to know for myself that the things that I liked were legitimate, not just because I was emotional for seeing Leia again or because, you know, I really, really was rooting for a certain character or whatever it is. Right. And I also wanted to make sure that the things that I may have missed 
things that other people had noticed that we were complaining about. I wanted to see that again to make sure, check myself. It was definitely worth a second viewing for sure. Yeah, if you've only seen it once and you've you know developed an opinion, whatever that opinion is, I suggest seeing it again. One of two things is going to happen. Either you're going to you know, decide that you actually really don't like it, or you're going to really solidify the fact you do like it. So I would say go see it again mm -hmm. for sure. So um, we have a list of some things that we're going to just you know go down the line and uh, whether we didn't like it or we did like it and, and why it worked and why it didn't work. So I think the first thing we have on here is um, – Yoda. And this is not linear. We're not talking linear. All. It was just a random a random list. We're drunk. Of... We just started thinking about Let's just go. Yeah. Let's go. Yoda. Take it or leave it. Oh, take it for sure. Yeah. I mean I I, I, I Puppet loved it. Yoda. <laughs> Puppet Yoda. And it seemed like throughout the sequence it changed. Like maybe there was a little CGI or different puppets being used. Yeah. Um I loved it and you had the point out I mean I wasn't even, I was sick too. But you had told me, you were like, the books, they're already taken out of the tree. Yeah. So Yoda's like, fucking. Let's set that shit on let's fire. Let's set that shit on fire. So you know? Yoda, fucking Force Ghost Yoda, sets <coughs> down the lightning, yeah. sets this tree on fire, and he's cracking up. I thought that was fucking hilarious. And, and, and I do love the throwbacks to like Empire, yeah. to where he tells him, he's like, you know. Always staring at the the horizon, young Skywalker. Never focused on here, and then he hits him. Yeah. And that's something we haven't seen with a Force Ghost is like interaction, physical interaction. I mean, we did we you know we did see Obi Wan set on a log, so there is contact. Yeah. But he hit him with, with you know with the cane, and he created lightning to come down and yeah. take out that tree. That was really fucking cool, and I hope that that Luke's gonna be a Force Ghost in nine. I mean, I'm sorry. Clearly. So, Maybe we're going to have more, like, interaction, like, physical interaction with Luke. Depending on what he can ghost. do. I mean, we yeah. we don't have all of the answers. No. What, what the Force can do. I think that that's the biggest thing right now is that everyone just thinks that they know what the Force is, and that's that. That's it! That dude fucking knuckle that shit out because they. I think that's really what it is. They're setting I'm their ways for, like the Jedi. They're like setting the Jedi. their ways. Arrogant fucks like the Jedi yeah. and fundamental Christians. And, you know, they think that they know what's going on. But in reality, there is there is not one writer for this anymore. This is a world or a galaxy or a universe, whatever you want to call it, full of creative minds that are coming together to move this story, not just forward, but outward. Yeah. We are broadening everything that has to do with this galactic story. At the same time, we have to set it up for the future, too. Well, that's, mean, that's, that's what I'm saying. We're not just moving forward. We have to move outward. We have to branch. We have to pick up all it's not. Things. It's not George Lucas sitting at a table saying, exactly. you know, his original thing was to do nine. Yeah. That was it. But after the prequels, he was like, fuck it. I'm not doing them anymore. So that was it. Yeah. It, with, with him, that was it. He didn't know at the time when he did the prequels that he was going to sell the franchise, sell Lucasfilm, yeah. all that shit. These are people that have to think about the future. Yeah. I mean, there's going to be Star Wars. Uh, I don't even know if they're going to be movies in the future. Shit, technology may change. <laughs> we might have Star Wars holograms. What, whatever. Yeah. There's going to be Star Wars, uh, you know, after we're gone. Yeah. And so, that lore is not set in, in any kind, set in stone in any way because... There's nothing, there was nothing really out there already that is deemed canon mm -hmm. that says this is our book of rules for the Force and this is what it is and this is how well, you can use it. Well, that was the biggest thing is... with getting rid of all that shit is with that there were rules. Yeah. And now it's kind of like, it's open. You yeah. can do whatever the fuck you want. It, the, the expanded universe, the legend shit, it kind of limited certain things. Mm -hmm. And especially characters. You know, some characters were dead. Some characters took different paths. Yeah. How can you expand on that if you're going to do movies? You, right. You, you, you can't. And in the end, in the end, this is... And some a, of this, this shit was a... stupid, guys. I mean, just admit it. Some of this shit was stupid. So the best thing that they could yeah. have done... Is watch it and start over? Wipe it out and start over because some of this shit was allow really it, fucking Allow that stupid. to live in legend. Allow that to live in legend in its own thing. Yeah. And create something unlike what we see in Marvel and DC movies where 
you've got 20 storylines and nothing matches up, matches up and you just kind of have to accept it the way it is. We're actually getting something that other franchises it's are cohesive. getting. It's cohesive. It, we yeah. are getting a cohesive story yeah. that among all of the other stories are sticking together. So in my opinion, the fact that Yoda brings down Force Lightning as a Force Ghost and can whack Luke over the head, which yeah. is totally Yoda, not only that, I feel like that is bringing, clearly setting that Luke is turning into Yoda, right. a cranky old hermit, you know what I mean? It, that kind of all goes together. But not knowing what these Force Ghosts are capable of doing, I think is a great thing. Because Absolutely. now we can imagine anything. Yeah. Anything. And I, I'm, I'm totally willing to accept many I, things when it comes I, I thought to it was Force. great. I mean, I know you're not the, the biggest fan of Yoda. I like Yoda. I do. I, I Sometimes I feel like he's... I feel he is put up on this pedestal of amazing Jedi, yeah. but in the end, he's just, he's a cranky old guy who has some really awesome abilities and he yeah. uses them very well. And, uh, it, peop, I think a lot of people kind of forget what type of character Yoda is. Yeah. I mean, I, I love Yoda. I mean, you liked him in the, clearly when he came back, yeah. that was pretty, when it was, you see him from the back. And it was, still in oh God, ears. it was like, <laughs> it was it was one of like many emotional moments in that movie and yeah. the not shitty part, but I, I listened to a lot of star Wars podcasts and there were rumors that, um, Frank Oz, who does Yoda puppeteer and voice yeah. was seen, you know, well, you at knew the he was studios. Coming. You knew he was coming and you didn't well, say there, anything there, to me. There, 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 there were also rumors that Hayden Christensen was going to be there. I am so glad that didn't well, happen. Well, don't hate. I'm not going to hate. Or, or even some type of CGI uh, Alec Guinness mashed with uh, Ewan McGregor type deal. Yeah. Um, but Yoda was perfect. Yoda, Yoda worked in this. And it's cool to see that even like how Yoda mentions Ray and all that, it's cool. You get like this connective tissue from like, I don't know. It's just, everything's just coming together. And I just, I feel like that. I too. thought it was great. And it was, it was, it was a really great scene, a really emotional scene. And I, I just thought it was funny. The dialogue uh, between the two. Yeah. How, yeah, Luke's gotten old and there's been a lot of shit going on, but deep down Luke hasn't really changed. He's still that naive farm boy. Mm -hmm. Who's always looking at the horizon and not really focusing on yeah. where you're at, yeah. what you are doing. Yeah, and, and it sets up this tone and this idea that we are supposed to carry through the rest of the movie that these are things of the past. This is yeah. other stuff we're looking at. <coughs> you have to look at what's coming in front of you yeah. and what is going to, what does he say? They are what, shit, how does that line go? Like, ma like basically he's saying masters have a hard job because mm -hmm. they are what move beyond past us. Right. And he's basically telling him, Ray has to be greater than you yeah. and bigger than you because there are greater and bigger things coming yeah. that, you know, we have to protect. It's the, the responsibility and the burden that the yeah. master has, yeah. you know. Exactly. Um, but teaching failure at the same mm -hmm. time is just as yeah. important as teaching new skills or, exactly. uh, you know. It was a very important kind of conversation that moves us forward in the story. That is great. Um, I, I, I loved it. I thought it was. I thought it was great, and and it sets it. I felt like it reminded us of why Luke was the way that he was, mm -hmm. and there are a lot of people. We're going to jump right into cranky Luke now. There are a lot of people who are complaining about cranky Luke. Oh, he threw the lightsaber over his shoulder. He threw the lightsaber over his shoulder as a sign of, I am not going to be a part of this anymore. I have given this up, and it's been a while, you know, six, seven, eight years, whatever. It's been a while since he's been part of, you know, uh, the Jedi Temple and all of that when everything happened with Kylo Ren. So he's been on this fucking uh, island for X amount of years, being a hermit, being cranky, living in his own sorrow, wallowing in his own guilt. These things will bring you down oh. and eat you away until you can look at your lightsaber and throw it right over I mean, your fucking shoulder. Really think about it and think of it as if you were Luke. Really think about it. First off, you were born, you are raised, and you don't know your parents. Okay? And everything that you know about your parents is a lie. Yeah. And you end up finding out it's a lie. Then you find out who your father is. He's 
the big baddie of the galaxy. That's that's horrible. Yeah. And then your own dad chops off your fucking hand. Dude, some fucked up shit I mean, is happening to Luke. This guy, he's been through so much shit. He finds out that he has a sister. You know, his best friend is killed. He rebuilds the Jedi Order. It's taken down by his own nephew. This guy has been through some shit. I know that if I went through all that shit, and especially when I thought that maybe this is what I was supposed to do, wasn't I the last hope? Right. And then it's taken away from me. I think I would just kind of pack my shit and go somewhere on vacation and fucking die. Too. Right. Right. I, I think that... Uh, uh, just the idea of him not wanting to help Ray, ignoring her while she's there. Uh, you know, he's not old Obi, old Ben Kenobi. Yeah. You know what I mean? He hasn't been waiting around for, you know, the young Luke Skywalker to come and save the day. He doesn't want to save the day. He doesn't care about saving the day. He doesn't he doesn't want to be involved with Kylo Ren anymore. He doesn't <coughs> he shuts himself off for the, from the force for Christ's sake, and yeah. he doesn't want anything to do with it. So, you know, I think that um, it's completely believable that he would toss that lightsaber right over his shoulder. It yeah. totally made sense for me, and it wasn't a moment that was funny to me. No, a lot of people laughed, and it was funny, but I don't feel like it was. It was kind of sad. To be funny. It was sad. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean that, that that was his father's lightsaber. You know, the lightsaber that Obi Wan yeah. gave him. Mm-hmm. You know, his first battle with Darth Vader, he used that lightsaber. Yeah. And um, it, it was it was sad, and you just realize how much of a broken person he is mm-hmm. in this movie. I agree. Um, and there were like some points, especially his interaction with R two, to where you see the message mm-hmm. from oh my God. from Leia. It was Tears. Re- it was it was really emotional <laughs> yeah. because they played the whole fucking thing first off, and when he he says it, he's like R two, yeah, and you see that look come across it's his face. It's like holy shit! It was like it was like it was like Return of the Jedi Luke, right? Or Empire Luke, right? I felt that too. You know where yeah. uh, where uh, R two is in the swamp on Dagobah? And he's like R two, like I don't know. It was yeah. like. It's like he's for been, a moment. It's like you like traveled back in time like thirty years. And like he like, forgot about all whoa. all the shit that weighed down on him. It was all it the was a really that cool he moment, had, and, and he could live <coughs> in a time where he he could save the world. Yeah, he had the ability to save the world. It was a world. really cool moment. I, I really I really enjoyed that as well. Um, I, I you know I've heard a lot about him. People grossed out that he drank this this green milk and you know oh no when he drank the green milk i stopped you know i was out i didn't want to do it anymore and it's like he's living on a fucking island with no there's no 7-eleven around the corner where the fuck do you think he's getting his food well i i, I kind of took it like with ray like she thinks that he's a legend he's yeah, a myth exactly and he's like this is what i do i'm sitting on the side of this island milking the sloth got milk beard Am I that much of a legend? No. No, I'm just a I, human that's being. Exactly, I didn't even think of it that way. Yeah. But that's exactly what Am it I is. that great? Look at me. Look Th- at this me. is what I am. Yeah. You know? I'm, no, you know, I'm I carrying a freaking 70 pound fish on my back yeah. in the rain just to survive another day yeah. waiting for you know the universe to strike me dead. Um, I thought all of that worked well. I, I understood why we were seeing that. And I think that's probably one of the most important things is to understand why in a story. And maybe some folks are missing the why. That's my interpretation of it. I feel like we got to see why he is acting. We know why he's acting this way. And it's sad and it's broken and it's depressing. But that's... That is the unfortunate side effect of having power. Mm -hmm. It's being alone. Being alone. All right. So, what? One other really big aspect of the Last Jedi is the Force, and right. you know, Yoda talks to Luke about that a lot, um, and we see it used in ways that we haven't really seen it used before. Mm-hmm. Um, and I feel that it was very a very important thing to know more about what the Force is moving forward, because without characters like you know Darth Vader and Luke and Leia and all these no- normal Force users that we're used to. 
you know, we kind of saw something new with Kylo Ren in uh, The Force Awakens in him stopping blasters, you know. And freezing people. And freezing people and, and then, all like, that. like, going into their minds. Yeah. These things are kind of somewhat new concepts in the way that they were used. Um, that that wasn't that? really shit upon, but yet force projection is. Right. <laughs> and, 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 and this okay. is from this is from a young force user. So someone that has had the force. I mean, I don't know what Luke would be. 60s, maybe something like that. Maybe so you late figure 50s. probably for like 30, 40 years. He's not capable of doing that. The last Jedi who's been doing nothing but training and studying right. and right. whatever. Whatever. Whatever word. Yeah. That's straight up true. Uh, so, uh, uh, now I forgot where I was going with that. We were just talking about, <laughs> no, we were just talking about how the Force, they, they kind of, they remind us, but they elaborate further of what the Force is. Like, it surrounds us. It's it's everywhere. It it's not. Us. It's, it's not it's, taking a side. No. It's just everywhere. It's the people that use it that manipulate it. Yeah. The force isn't deciding anything. No. It's what the characters do with it. Yeah. Both. Both. Good or bad. Good or right. bad. Sith, yeah. Jedi, whatever. And even the Jedi, in and of themselves, are not pure yeah. with the force because mm-hmm. they have their own agenda. Exactly. But the force has no agenda. <coughs> the force is a necessary. Thing that has to be there to keep the balance and you see in the movie you know Ray is sitting on the rock and she's like I see I see life and I see death but I see that death bringing new life and it shows you know things growing from the ground and that's totally true yeah you know this force is absolutely necessary and if there's anything I'm you know don't believe in God or anything but if there's anything that I could believe in I would believe in the force and I think that that is something that could actually be a thing that holds together. Actually, more of like, you know, in, in America here, you know, Native Americans, yeah. you know, the way they feel about things. Yeah. To me, that's more of the force well, than any type of contemporary religion sure, that's out there. I mean, sure. And I think that a lot of these things, both George Lucas and all of these other writers that have come in, either writing stories and expanding the universe or, or you know, uh, you know, all canon books that are coming out, whatever, all of these creative minds that have come together to make this story, I think they can all come in together on one thing and that they are using myth and legends from all over the world all different types of religion all different languages all kinds of different cultures and they're putting that together in this story that that they're setting in another galaxy but really it's all stuff that we already kind of have here well, it's not just that i mean in star wars canon the force itself is interpreted in different ways mm. I mean, even if you go to, like, Rebels, like Zeb and his species, they use the Force, but they use it in a different way. Mm. And then in the Legends of Luke Skywalker book, the Force is explained in all these different stories, but they're interpreted different. It's still the Force. It's the same thing. It's just some people aren't going to sit there and just say, I'm going to use it for good or I'm going to use it for evil. Some people just live with it Mm -hmm. and... Yeah. You don't have to have something and use it. You can have something and live like with it and appreciate it for what it is. You don't have to use it. Absolutely. So I completely agree with that. I think that was the big thing with this movie is just explaining that it's everywhere. It's around us. It surrounds us. It's just how you use it is how important. you use it. It's important. And sometimes you don't even have to use it. You don't yeah. But I think too it sets up that any anyone is able to tap into that tap into it, yeah. and some people have a bigger tap the ability <laughs> some people just have yeah. a natural tapping ability yeah and we see that obviously in kylo and ray ray and ray and kylo uh so good uh, or bad have unfortunately have a fucking kegerator that is just fucking uh <laughs> a forced kegerator <laughs> getting that shit going i have to ask you though yeah. uh so have you shipped kylo and and ray do you ship that shit do you hashtag rilo just a Ray yes or no. Lo. Not Rilo. Ray Lo. <laughs> Our daughter thinks it's Rilo. It's Ray Lo. I honestly, I, has there been an um, actual vote on this to see which one is which? It's Ray Lo. It could be either way. I'm, I'm in the community. It's Ray Lo. Um, but does the Star Wars community actually ship? Because I honestly believe that if you want to really get into what shipping is and how you make a ship name, you need to talk to 13-year-old girls oh, because yeah. they are, that's their community. I would actually Yo been... Yo in their motherfucking house now, bitch. I, I would have I actually been happy with a Finn and Poe relationship. 
I, I would have been okay with yeah. that. The, the interaction, that would have been fine with me. Uh, the Finn and Rose thing, it'll go somewhere in yeah. nine, I'm sure. Uh, well, that's fine. Kylo, These I two, feel like Ray has other shit on her mind than that fucking Juicy D. Yeah, and I mean, you even get the tease at the end with Ray and Poe, and it's like, that ain't gonna it's happen. It's probably, there might be a little romance, um, These but two, uh... I think that There's their more. connection is, is so much greater than yeah. you want to bone. There may <laughs> be, unless they throw us a big swerve and we find out somehow they're related, brother, sister, cousin, whatever, there may be a moment to where there's a passionate kiss or some type of sexual tension, but no, I think it's bigger. I think it's deeper. I think that... If there is something deeper and more meaningful than an actual soulmate type of relationship, that is what they have. And I feel that is because they are the polar opposites yeah. of these choices that they've made using the Force. I feel like they have, they had an equal ground as far as what they can tap into and access. Yeah. And one has decided one way and one has decided the other. And because of these decisions, they are now for, going to be forever linked as a fulcrum, which if you don't know what a fulcrum is, it's the balance of, well, I of, think a, the, you know, of the... scales. That that is that is them. They are balanced on these two scales, and yeah. that is how they are going to be connected forever. Yeah, but I mean, with these two characters, like I think with Ray, she's discovering. She's a little naive. With Kylo, Ben, it's deeper with him. There's a sense of betrayal with yeah. him and he's lost he's broken mm -hmm. i don't think he's going to come back i don't think no. that this character is going to be redeemed like darth vader i don't no. think that we're seeing like the fall of this guy i don't need him to be redeemed because no. i have seen what i have seen now because of this movie i have gotten to see why he is what he is yeah. if han solo were my dad i'd be pretty pissed off too you know daddy issues are a thing uh, you know, uh, even even with Leia as his mom, she's a general. She's she's part of this she's rebellion, a politician. resistance. Almost. She has shit to do that is not raising her son. They were technically both abandoned. I mean, if you want, they to get... were both abandoned. And she, when they connect, yeah. when they use the force to connect, which is kind of something we haven't really seen in this way, anyway, as far as I'm aware, is am I wrong? I've never seen it. Really. Yeah. Uh, so in the way that they use it, where they can actually physically see each other within their own environment, um, you know, that's something that is going to take not just some great ability, but a very strong, necessary connection between the two. Well, I mean, the thing with him is, I mean, dude, right off the bat, look at his lightsaber. It's so fucking unstable. Mm -hmm. It's just, he's unstable. He's just, yeah, he's fucked up. He's going to cut her staff. And, and I think well, she's going to fall. He's leaning on her. She's, she's leaning on, on him. Her. But, and I think that a, a lot of people, they're just like, oh, he's just a, he's a emo kid. He's a, he's a pointless character. No. no. I, I, I've said it before. Mm. This character is probably the most complex character that we've seen in Star Wars. He is what? He, Anakin should have been. Yes! Yeah. I was literally going to say yeah. that. He's what Anakin, what I feel that George Lucas was trying to show us with Anakin. Yeah. A tortured soul, a, a conflict, a consistent conflict within, within himself, you know, uh, and there is, of course, this higher being that is trying to control him, just like Anakin, and uh, in this situation, um, unfortunately for... For Kylo, uh, well, at that time it was Ben. His master, fucking in his mind, turned against him. That's so. what. That, that's what makes him my favorite character. Betrayal can shatter you. Betrayal <coughs> can, can can really affect who you become in the future. And mm -hmm. and you know, especially when you are fighting in in yourself between these two sides, and one side <laughs> proves to you in your in your mind that they are not on your on your turf. You know what I mean? Like they're not on your side as, as an adolescent, you're going to zoom right on over to the one who's going to offer you what you're yeah, looking for. Absolutely. And that was no for this one. And just like Ray, she's searching for something. She's really searching for uh, someone to show her what she, her place in all of this. 
and for her, thankfully, she comes across yeah. Luke before she comes across. I I, 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 so. I I liked all of it, all the the forced connections. Mm-hmm. The I the thought all of that like, worked. I thought, was... I thought that worked well in a way that told us that there are other ways to use the force. Yeah. There are well, other even, interesting ways. Even with him, you know, Kylo, I mean, we all know he's a monster, but it gave him a little bit of humanity, too. I so. agree. I agree. It worked. I, it did. It totally worked. Um, so what do you got next over there? Let's see. Uh, so I read some stuff about Canto Bite, and a lot of people are saying that that is a throwaway. <laughs> Excuse me, a throwaway scene. Yeah, it's a... Uh, agree or disagree? Throwaway or keep? Uh, keep. Yes. And uh, I, I'd say out of all the, um, <laughs> what would you call it, like controversial shit yeah. in The Last Jedi, this is the one that's least talked about because people are focusing on all the other things. But um, you're more in tune with this kind of shit, so you want to go over that with like... Uh, and I don't know why you say that, but okay. <laughs> well, like, you know, the war machine, you know, yeah. uh, the politics, the warmongering, the... The, the uh, war profiteering, the, the humane yeah. uh, treatment of animals. No, that was a big um, deal. I think that that was a good way to I, I, I thought that the CGI was good. A, a lot of people were knocking it. The father heirs, the, the horse-like creatures that are there, they, were cool they didn't them. bother me yeah. at all. No. And, uh, and jumping, jumping back and forth between... What's happening in the resistance slash rebellion? They talk a lot. They talk a lot about the rebellion mm-hmm. and how it's making a comeback. It's making a comeback, and I'm so excited about that. But so they, you know, they jump back and forth a lot between what's happening within the resistance rebellion and what's happening, you know, with with Kylo and Rey. And then because you have Finn and, and Rose taken off to go save the day, we now have this third story arc that we're watching. And a lot of people are saying that this third story arc is really not important. Throw away. But just... it is. It's important because it gives us an idea. Could it have been done in a different way? Could it have been shortened? Could it? Absolutely. It totally could have. From a story writer's standpoint, I agree. I it wouldn't have liked have to have seen it shortened. I would have liked to uh, take their time. I. I yeah. That's my only complaint with Canto Bite. I, I think it was rushed. Yeah. I would have liked to have seen maybe uh, 10, 15 more minutes of... Canto Bite, you know, when we do the the zoom in of the casino, let's slow down. Yeah. Let's stop at a table and go around the table and see what, you know, they're holding in their hands or maybe some right. dialogue between some characters. Let's see what they're drinking. Let's slow down. It just seemed like when we got in there, it was almost like how they did in Maz's Castle. Just boom, right through there. And We're like, there for a reason. We're going to find this reason. We're going to get out. You know, I just think about yeah. the cantina. You know, in episode four, we took our time. Guy just sitting there vaping, doing right? his thing. You know, we got a Jawa, you know, getting a drink. It was really slow, methodical. It just took its time. And I feel like it was kind of a waste of opportunity. But at the same time, I think when we get the DVD, you're going to come to find out that there was a longer scene. Some was cut. <laughs> cut it. Oh, I think because a lot of stuff He had so cut. much story to tell. Yeah. And he just didn't have the time. But I really liked... The like glossiness, the cleanness. It was a throwback to the prequels. Like it, it reminded Coruscant me, it, it made I me feel it. a lot like Hunger Games to me. Yeah. Where you have, you know, this, the elite. The elite. They what look district fancier. is that? They, oh God. <laughs> district one or? What's no, I can't remember now off the top of my head. This is Star Wars review. Damn it! Don't make me think about anything else. Um, but but, but totally, I get it. Yeah. It, it, yeah. It, for me, and I think this is what you want me to explain. Yeah. Go ahead. For Take me. It. <laughs> for me. What I what I recognized is that these two storylines are telling the same story in a different way. We have two aspects to Star Wars. We have the Force and we have war. And war is a big fucking deal. If you don't have war, you just have the word star, right? I mean, like, it's not Star Wars without a war. You have to have some type of galactic and conflict. Exactly. It's very important. And in this scene, we get to see the prophet of this conflict, of this conflict that's been going on for decades. And these these business owners, they don't have a side. They don't give a fuck. They're just making weapons they don't and care vehicles and exactly. technology for they, whoever's the highest right? bidder. They're like the force. Yeah. They're like the force. They, they're necessary, necessary evil for what's happening. And so for me, the Canto Bite scenes are important because it gives you this insight into... This isn't just about 
ships blowing each other up and, you know, bombers dying and heroes and villains and the force. This is about, I want, I'm going to use the word people, but you know what I mean. Creatures, whatever, beings making choices and profiting from where they are and how they can be a part of what's happening. Without this scene, we miss things like the clear division between the rich and the poor. We miss things like the fact that there is a layer of being out there that is still telling legends of the rebels. And they still have this hope inside of them because they have to. Because without this hope, they have despair, and that's not acceptable. Well, my, my biggest thing with that is I like seeing what else is going on. You spend so it's much time. You, 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 you spend so much time focused on these things. Why can't we just go somewhere else for a while? And Let's just take a vacation for 10 minutes. And But then there, the argument could be made that, well, yes, do that, but in other movies. Don't do that in, in this trilogy or whatever. But I think that, that it's important it, it, to include it, 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 it in this It didn't trilogy. bother me no. at all. And I think it's important to include it in this trilogy because we have to get from this point to this point at yeah. the end. And the story they're trying to tell... Was the plan fucked? Did it go as planned? No. No, it didn't. But in that scene, what they're trying to tell is, for me, a few things. The first thing they're trying to tell is the desperation of Finn and Rose to save the galaxy and to save the rebellion because without saving well, the trying to save the, the fucking radis i mean that's well that's what i'm saying to try that's, try to save the resistance that's, that's it. it that is it that's that ship is there. it so the desperation of trying to do that in desperation this is where they ended up and they're yeah. going to do this as best as they possibly can and the reason that finn is doing it clearly is because he has an out he's got an, an issue with the first order yeah. but he also has this uh you know affinity for Ray and that he wants to make sure that when she comes back there's something to come back to. Exactly. Rose clearly is trying to fight for what she knows and that's her sister and that's where she came from. And the resistance. And you get to know kind of more where she came from in this scene. And you see other children who are put in the same situation. And I yeah. you know I've heard the argument, why don't why are we including, you know, kids where there could have been droids? Why? I don't know. Maybe we'll find out. But why is not even the, the point here. The point is that it is well, you can say the same totally thing. Believable. You, you know, you can say the same thing for the First Order. Why didn't, why didn't the First Order just use droids or clones? They didn't. Unfortunately, they kidnapped kids. Mm -hmm. They recruited kids. Mm -hmm. And they programmed them. They brainwashed them to become soldiers. That's what happened to Finn. Whatever reason, it doesn't even matter what the reason is because this is where we are. And if you spend the entire movie talking about reasons, you're not going to get to anywhere. <laughs> so so take the reasoning. Well, I don't want to say take the reasoning out of it. Keep the logic. But don't <coughs> worry about why. Because the point of the fact is the reason that the, I feel that they were trying to show us that is to show us that there is there are people out in the galaxy who need the rebellion. And they don't give a fuck who wins. As long as they're making money, they don't give a shit. Well, those people... They like to just keep the war but, going. So there's this top layer of people who are wanting to keep the war going, the war machine, right? Who will feed both sides just for their own profit. And then down here is a bottom layer of the people who are oppressed yeah. and the people who are fucked with and the people who need the rebellion to get them out of the situation that yeah. they're in. Just like Rose. So for me, Canto Bite was necessary... I wanted to stay there longer. I'm sad they didn't even get to interact with the, this code breaker and they get just thrown straight into jail where they meet DJ, who I felt was initially, I felt he was kind of a whatever character. Throw away. But then I started to understand he is part of this too. And the, his story, the, what little bit of he is in there, is important to understand that he's a realist, he's unaffected. He's unaffected in yeah. either way. But he he tells you how it is. Yeah. With a stutter. But he he tell he tells you stutter, I don't know he about tells that. you how it is. Yeah. And he's just out for himself. And, and that's probably honestly how I would be <laughs> in this galaxy. Yeah. It's like you keep your force shit over there yeah. and your wars over there. I just want to make my money, do my shit, and be left. And alone. I think that that parallels what we find out about the force. Yeah. And that's the two threads in this is that the war and the force. Are, are the same in that they don't they don't choose a side they don't make a choice they don't they don't pick they don't they're not neither good nor bad they're just there 
and the, the things that are around them and the things that are interacting with each other and what That's makes a good this point. choice. That's a good so point. that for me is the point of this story. In I actually, us, you know, the first time, like I didn't, I was like, yeah, whatever. I don't like him. After seeing it again, yeah. I, was like, I like that character. He's, he's needed, and I kind of hope he comes back. Give me a fucking book. I don't think he's going to be back Probably for nine. It's, it's Benicio Probably Del Toro. Not. Give me a book. I'm a reader. Yeah. I, I love my Star Wars novels. Get, I don't give a fuck. Just give me a short story on him. Yeah. I want to know a little bit more right. about him. I, 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 I thought he was that, interesting. I wish they could have uh, you know, fleshed that out a little bit more. Given us a little maybe bit they more did. Of that. Maybe, maybe they did. Cut. We, we, we can't have a three and a half hour long movie. We're gonna have a three and a half hour long review, though. Let me tell you. <laughs> uh, but uh, I think that that uh, this Canto Bites uh, entire scene, everything that happened, was absolutely important. And the cinematography, like the whole like coastal, it was beautiful. Atlantic City, yes. whatever the fuck was going on, yes. it was just. It, it kind of brought all of. I I don't like the prequels. Like, I personally am not a fan of the prequels. Sith is great, but anyway. It brought the things I did like about yeah. it. The costuming, the colors. Well, did you the, see the everything. part that it was like, I don't know what it was, it was like a cafe or a candy store or something. There was like jars of like different yeah. colored beans. Yeah. And it was like rainbow color. And then like the father airs just break through and there was like all these colors just flying around. It's like, wow. That's neat. It that was neat. That is fucking It was pretty awesome. cool. But then it brings you to, you literally go down into the depths into where the you find out what's really going where on. where the oppressed are yeah. and you know it it really kind of foreshadows and sets up what's going to happen at the end and why it's important that why it's important that this lower level of oppressed people know that there's hope and that there's there are people who are willing to fight for them yeah there are and there I know are that out there that are willing to to <laughs> go to the ends of the galaxy. I, I, I know that it. so many people are going to talk shit on the end of this movie, the very end. I fucking love. I loved it, and I get it, and we're we'll, going to we'll, talk about we'll, that. We'll, we'll get there, we but will but talk the Canto by this underground yeah. uh, thing with like the stable and mm -hmm. all that. I was like, what? Rose gives the boy the ring, and you're kind of like, oh, okay, whatever. Um, can we just say I want that fucking cool ring? Yeah, that's pretty cool. I want that but, ring. That's pretty. But cool. there was a huge payoff, and if you're just, God, you have to have an open mind with this movie, mm -hmm. and you have to love it. That's the biggest thing. You have to love the franchise, and and be willing to accept. I mean, this is it right here. The, the, you know, this is it. Right. And when, you know, when I see that, I, I mean, it's right there. It's written, hope. And that whole thing, it was, it was about hope. And mm -hmm. out of all the things, all the little nostalgic throwbacks, little fanboy yeah. moments, that part at the end, and you, I don't know if you saw, but it just no. did waterworks. Really? And it's just, I don't they know. Talk, I mean, we'll, they talk we'll, about it. And they use the word spark. And I think that right then and there, right there on Canto Bite, yeah. when they escape, that's the spark. Yeah. There it is. Maybe. There it is. All you have to do is is allow the legend to spread and that legend breeds hope and i think that that's exactly why that's exactly why and how and, and uh we got these scenes and and why they were in the movie and why they're important yeah to me so anyway that, so that's that so one thing we didn't write down and it just dawned on me let's talk about vice admiral holdo real quick Oh, she was cool. But you know what? I have to say, it was kind of difficult for me to see her in this role because I was just waiting for, but I was waiting for Jeff Goldblum to come walking out yeah, or something. like a T-Rex to bust through the rabbits right? or something. So, yeah, you want to talk about nostalgia? Yeah. We're bringing in fucking Elliot <coughs> Hitler to play, you know, a vice I, admiral. I, I, I really, Wars. I really like the character and uh, it's a little different from the book because you're, inter you're introduced to her in the book, but at the same time. In which book? Leia. Okay. Um, they they were kind of friends and all this, but at the same time, it's been over thirty years, so people change in thirty years. Obviously, fanboys calm down. Right. About Luke, you know. Um, but the 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 ultimate sacrifice, taking out the supremacy by hitting the Radis light speed. At light speed. It was it was, it was amazing, and she's a really cool character. And I was yeah. really disappointed when it happened because I was like, ah. I wanted to have that that older, stronger female character for Nine because I know that we're not going to have Leia. We're not going to have Leia because, unfortunately, she's passed away. I so. know. But and, you know, just a weird side note. I had read somewhere that she put it in her will she's not to be CGI'd. That's fine. 
I but, think but that would be pretty did, awesome. She, she, that she... No, that she put that in her will, that she will not be CGI'd. Okay. But she did like Rogue One, though, That's when she CGI'd. saw it. Sure. Um, but anyways, I mean, just... I was kind of sad because I was like, uh, you know, Carrie's gone. Maybe we can just. I have... kind of wanted to see more interaction between uh, Holdo and it's Holdo, right? H O L D O. Okay. Holdo. Yeah. Between Holdo and uh, uh, Poe. Yeah. I well, she ends up telling Lane. She's like, I. I like, like that him. guy. Yeah. yeah. He's he's uh, got balls. The guy's um, got balls. But just the character, like all in all, I liked. It. I didn't have a problem with it. I I feel that we didn't get. Uh enough but it's fine it she was a device for where the plot was going and uh it was good it was, it was a good moment and definitely her death that moment was one of the coolest scenes in star wars totally no silent. sound like 10 seconds you're like well you know what should is be the sound okay what really the fuck's going be on any sound well i know space. but I, so, I know you know for me the scientist my science brain was like <laughs> no sound we got an explosion with no sound. Neil deGrasse Tyson is going to be so excited. But no, yeah. we, it, we ended up blowing up. But I thought that that was a really awesome it was, scene. It was a cool moment. But we can get back on track. I, I, I just, no, it was it a great, it was right a great addition to talk about. So some another scene that I've been reading about that uh, folks are like, oh, we got to, you know, that was so stupid. I don't know why we did that. Uh, just like Canto Bite, you know, uh, is Leia. So, you know, the beginning of the movie, we see... I thought it was a really cool scene where Kylo and uh, his mom are like, you know, force connected. They, they can sense each other. They can sense each other. And he is pissed off, obviously, at fucking whatever. Snoke they, just uh, reamed his ass. Snoke reamed his ass. So he's being a baby and he's out there, uh, you know, being doing baby Kylo Ren stuff. Uh, and the whole bridge gets blown up. We lose Akbar, which is... I was sad. Rest I was peace. sad. I was sad that we lost Akbar, but you know, Leia gets sucked out into space. Yeah. There is a uh, some kind of like protection force field, whatever, shield, around around their ship. Mm -hmm. And as far as I'm aware, she was still kind of inside of it, so I don't know if that's a discrepancy her. between the two of us. But that's if okay. the, well, somehow she didn't die in space. So if you can explain to me how she didn't die in space in any other way, I'm gonna I'm tell you how her. she didn't die in space. How she not die in space? Because she's Princess fucking Leia. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you my theory. Okay, how did she not die in space? Because she's the greatest Force user of the Skywalkers, and we just don't know it. You think so? Well, you read the book. I didn't read the no, book. No, no, no. I'm. She used the Force a little bit in the mm -hmm. book, but not a big deal. Okay. I think that she is the most powerful of the two. Really? What Luke did, very cool. But what she did, that's amazing. She's powerful. So why is she not shown off her power so far? I don't think it was her forte. I don't think it was her she was thing. Mystic. She was more into the politics and being a leader and a general. Dabbling in the force well, and being a Jedi wasn't it wasn't something that she was interested her, in. Her dad was a huge force user, right? But her dad, the one who raised her, was a politician, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, he was. I mean, he was. Okay. He was a general. She. She was so more she interested. She was more in, She well, was raised in in war stuff, not yeah. Jedi stuff. Well, her biological mom was a politician as well. Exactly. So. so she definitely has that. So I could see how that would be. So maybe it's a hard mix of both. Maybe she is a very strong force user. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, but decides not to use it, just chooses not to. She's a closet um, force user. Which I think is possible. I think that in her way of being diplomatic, she's not using it, and that's great with me. Uh, but it, in the same aspect, I think that we could also maybe attribute a little bit of it to the fact that she was still kind of protected within this, uh, you know, shield. Of well, you have to remember that the galaxy knows at this point. They, they found out quite a, quite a few years before. They know that she is Darth Vader's daughter. Yeah. So the last thing that Leia really wants to be doing right. is using the Force. Right. And the public finding out. As part of the resistance. Rebellion but resistance. when she does what she does in the movie, you can see Poe and uh, Billy Lord's character. I think her name's like Konkonex or something. She has a weird name. 
comics or something like that. They're all at the window. Like, and they're like, what? They're like, what the fuck? But at the same moment, they're like, yep. Yeah. Knew it. Knew it. And Knew they it. just, they go to go save her, you know, yeah. when she comes in. But I don't have a problem with the so moment. The big, I, 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 I don't. See, okay. Some things that I saw, what I can see people have a problem with. There was a, a coloring of the scene that made it look ethereal, which made her look angelic or like a ghost or something of the sort because it had a purple blue hue. Mm -hmm. That will automatically create in our minds, just as human beings, that's what we're seeing. And for, for Star Wars, that's odd. It's out of place. So automatically we have this odd coloring. Like she had an aura? Just the coloring of the scene. Okay. Just the overall coloring of the scene. I didn't think she had an aura at all. I think it was just honestly a poor choice in coloring. But I can see why they did the coloring like that. There's no lights because the bridge has been blown up. She's out in space. She's icy, which yeah. would happen to you. You'd freeze quickly out in space. Um, <clears throat> I think that that first sets that tone. And then she puts her hand out, right? So she's, we think she's dead, which... Side note, personally, I think she should have died. It, it would have been okay. I, I think she okay. should have died there, and I would have cried, and I would have let it go, yeah. and then we would have moved on, and then, you know, Holdo could do something heroic, and we have Holdo now to, she's our new journal. But that's okay. I am going to defend Princess Leia till the end of my fucking life. But, so she puts her hand out in the force motion, like any other force user that we've seen anywhere. Right? Luke puts his hand out. Uh, Vader puts his hand out. Fucking Kylo puts his hand out. Snoke puts yeah, his hand out. Yeah, they all do it. Everybody yeah. puts their hand out. But when she puts her hand out, she's floating in fucking space because there is no gravity. So when she floats, it's a blue hue, a blue-purple hue, so it looks ethereal. She's frozen, so she looks glowy. She's got her hand out, and she's floating. That together is an odd visual for people, and it's very hard. I don't have a problem with the scene. I'm not you don't have you. to sell me. No, I don't. I'm talking about everybody else. The reason I I think that people have a hard time with it is because visually that's what we got. And so when you sit down and you really break that apart and you've looked at it multiple times and you really consider what the situation is, I get it. I think she should have died in space, but I get how that came about and why she's floating. And she's floating because there's no fucking gravity. She's like this because Darth Vader would be like this, yeah. Luke would be like this, everybody would be like this because it's space. If you look at astronauts, they float just like that. I mean, here we go again. We said the same thing with Luke. Leia's pretty much been through all the same shit yeah. that Luke's been through. Plus, her home planet was fucking destroyed. And you know, Kylo Ren's her fucking son. Yeah. And she was embarrassed in the Senate by someone coming out and airing her dirty laundry, blah, 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 blah. To me, the princess can do no wrong. And the scene did not bother me at all. I thought it was beautiful. And I thought that the moment to where they really pan like on her face and her body, where you get kind of the close up. I thought that was it. It was like it was it was it was like a tribute. Yeah. And and I thought it was it was angelic. It was different. Yeah. It it was ballsy. I, I, I liked it and it doesn't bother me. So I mean It absolutely didn't bother me at all that she came back and in fact I kind of like did a mini fist bump when she did, but I, I feel like it could have ended there. That would have been fine with me too. And she could have just been dead for the rest of the movie and we could have moved on. Um, we didn't. And this is what we had. And I get, I get why she floated. I get why she looked like that. I get why she has a statue of Liberty. You know what I mean? Like I totally get all I mean, of at this. the end of the day, all the fanboys wanted Leia to use the force. Leia used the force. She Shut the fuck up. She did. Move the fuck on. Sorry. Or go hold yourself <laughs> and watch Empire. We're getting drunker and drunker as this fucking go, review goes on. So go, we're going to be bigger and bigger douchebags. Go, go hold yourself in your basement and watch right. Empire in your mom's basement. <laughs> now, if you didn't like this movie, don't get us wrong. We are all about the, uh, you know, the, the idea that movies are subjective. Entertainment is subjective. Some people are going to like stuff that other people don't. But you don't have to be a douchebag about it. And you don't have to go threaten the fucking director as though he's the only person who had any hand in this movie whatsoever. You know, maybe stop for a second. Think about what we're saying and take it to heart, you know. And if you have some constructive criticism or other ideas or you saw something else, 
let us know in the comments. We really want to start a discussion. We're yeah. open to that. And we, even though we're drunk, we won't be total, total assholes. So I think Leia should have died in the beginning, but I'm okay with her survival. And I really like the way they, they worked with her. I would have been fine either way. Yeah. So I'm curious to see been. what happens in nine. Yeah. Let's say just, you know, we travel in time like two, three years or whatever. And we find out that Princess Leia had passed. I'm okay with that. Yeah. You don't have to fucking explain everything to me. No. Shit happens. Yeah. Maybe she got space cancer or fucking she just died of natural causes. Or she got into a fucking speeder accident. She's old. That's fine. She happens. It, it's, it's okay. okay. It's all but okay. But people are like, I need to know. And it's like, shut the fuck up. Why do you have to know everything? Miss, everything. We don't know everything about everything. And it's, it's fine. Not, and it's, you know what? If you deal. want something different, why don't you write a Star Wars story and pitch it to Kathleen Kennedy and let's see where it goes. Yeah. And really, that's how things get made. Yeah. If you have a different story or you have an idea that you want to do, I actually am 100% legitimately encouraging you to write that story. Write that fucking story. Make it fan fiction if you have to, to start out with whatever you have to do. Write your story. Write it down. Maybe we'll get to see it in a movie someday. Excellent. So, moving forward. Snoke. People are pissed. People are pissed that A, we killed Snoke in the second movie, and B, that Snoke's no one. But nobody ever said Snoke was anybody in the first place. Well, Snoke has to be somebody. Snoke's and, gotta be somebody, and, yeah. And even though Snoke is dead, I want a backstory on Snoke. I want to know. I think Give we're me a get book. It. Give me something. Oh, we'll get it. I want to know how Snoke knows the dark side, yeah. where Snoke came from. Yeah. How old is he? I want to know. And it, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to like be pissed if I don't get it. I would just like to get it because I'm yeah. really, really right. fucking curious. What's up with Snoke? Like, right. I want to know. And that's all I Look, gotta say about we that. We didn't. We didn't know. We didn't know anything about fucking Palpy. Oh, until, totally, totally. We didn't know anything about Palpy. Totally. So, so in in the same breath, if you're complaining that you don't know anything about Snoke, you didn't know anything about fucking Palpatine either until long later. So, I'm shut not. The fuck up I'm and not wait. mad because I didn't really get anything about Snoke. Yeah. I'm just intrigued. And I want some stuff about Snoke. But I'm, I'm not really hoping, it. yeah. But his death um, scene was awesome. <laughs> Dear J.J. Abrams, please let us know what's going on with Snoke in, in you know, movie nine, I, please. I think it'll end up being like a book or something. I'll let you know. Even a little bit of flashback going That's fine. Going, going into the next movies or whatever. Whatever it is, a little bit more about I'm not Snoke. Even gonna, I'm great. not even going to theorize because all no. my fucking theories and ideas were thrown out the window. And I like and that's, that. That's I like the that, great though. thing. That's the great thing is that you have writers who are on a different plane yeah. who are thinking differently than what you're thinking. And that's okay. And that's the beauty of, of storytelling yeah. is that sometimes you can guess it and sometimes you can't guess it. And guess what? This time we didn't guess it. It was fine because it. it was okay because it's set up for our new main bad guy. Yeah. Supreme Leader Ren. Yeah. That's fucking awesome. The, to me, that's awesome. That this is a big baddie that I give two shits about. Yeah. I, I care. I didn't really care if Snoke lived or died. Yeah. I just yeah. I was more intrigued by the backstory of Snoke. How'd you find Snoke? What's up with Snoke? Who is he? So some things about Snoke, though, that I definitely want to point out are, A, his robe is definitely not as 70s porn star as I thought it was going to be. It was actually pretty cool. His yeah. CGI was Fucking phenomenal. It, 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 was, it was good. Phenom looking at his skin. Okay, so I have an issue. Sorry if you're super old. I have an issue with super, super old. Looking at super, super old people. It. I don't want to. I want to get old, but I don't want to see my super, super old face. Yeah. Um. I don't want to see my wrinkles. I don't want to see you know all of these things. like liver spots, liver and spots, and yeah. hair and all that stuff. But they had this on this guy, and it creeped me out. Yeah. It's he had like the weird white bushy eyebrows and he, shit. They, yeah. He had crooked teeth, and it wasn't just fucked up teeth. They were naturally looking crooked. Yeah. Teeth. No, they did a hell of a job. Andy Circus nailed it. His, it was an awesome dude, performance. The, 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 the um, you know, just looking at the anatomy of his face, his and hole his, in his, his neck, his and everything. everything yeah. You can see where the tendons were reattached. You can see where. I mean, there was a. Well, lot that's what I want to know. He's fucked. Him. He's like kind of twisted. He got up all creepy, and he's all he's fucked. And I, I think, yeah, it's cool. Kill him off. 
But give, give us a book or something. Give, give us something on stuff. And you know what? You know what? I I'd like to remind myself and everybody else and you. We are only on the second movie of this trilogy, yeah. so we actually have a whole other movie they could do all kinds of other stuff with. We have seen already that they don't mind traveling in different time points. Even this movie, in and of itself, probably does not happen. I mean, it's definitely got an odd timeline. And and, and if you guys would like to know a little bit more about Snoke, uh, pick up. Or even watch the YouTube videos on the Visual Dictionary for Last Jedi. Yeah. You find out a lot of shit. I'm not going to spoil it right now. This no. is a spoiler for the movie, not a spoiler yeah. for other details. Right. Go look it but up. There's, there's stuff out there. There's actually really cool shit on Snoke. I was like, oh, really? Yeah. It, it was pretty cool. Yeah. So. I agree. Um, I, blah, 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 shit, there was something else. Oh, so um, the CGI. His face looked cool. You could literally see the little hairs on his face. That was awesome. great. It was great. So the Snoke death scene was fucking awesome. It was one of my... F- it's probably one of my favorite scenes. Uh, I'm going to not say my favorite because it's not my favorite, but it's one of my favorite scenes in Star Wars. It's it, it's it, it's in my top two because I really like the where Luke surrenders to Vader on Endor. Mm-hmm. I, I love that scene. That's probably one of my favorite scenes in Star Wars. I just it's like the dialogue one. and everything. Mm-hmm. This is up there, though. The whole slow motion, her on one side, him on the other, and everything that happens in that whole fucking fight sequence. Uh, Praetorian Fuck. guards are fucking awesome. Those guys are badass, and, and I'm I've kicking myself calling, in the ass. I've been calling them the fucking awesome this whole time. I was like, dude, those guys are sick. So, so they make the six-inch Black Series figures, and I have had every single one. I think they came out with like three or four versions. Yeah. I've had every single one in my hand, and every time I have it, I just put it back. I'm like, yeah, I don't need that. No, they're I cool. fucking want them, and I'll probably cool. never have them in my hand again. No, is it fan service? Yeah, somewhat. It, it, it gives us new weapons. We get to see new things fighting. We get to see all this stuff. But I'm okay with it <coughs> because that's what Star Wars is. But they were is. fucking badass. Yeah. Those guys were awesome. They were, they were awesome. like statues. And then when shit went down, they were like... They were ready to and go. And their weapons, he had like that weird thing that like fucking... Where he was fighting Rey. He had, it was a staff and, and then he broke it in half and it was two things. That no, was. the other thing, it had like links. Oh, it was like, like a whip. He like wrapped it around. And then oh. he took the blade and like stuck it no, to his like, holy I, no, shit. No, it, it, the end of it had like a scorpion tail. Yeah. So it looked like a spade almost. And he had hooked her lightsaber like this and was pulling it, oh, it was pulling it awesome. towards him. Dude, that I mean, it was a cool scene. Our thirteen-year-old daughter, who likes Star Wars, sure, but she's never really admitted that she likes Star Wars because it would make her uncool. She doesn't even give a fuck anymore because that was the, she was like that was the coolest scene ever, and that's okay with me that that's the coolest. And scene besides, ever. like the beginning and the ending of the movie, that was I mean that scene I don't know I couldn't see behind me, but there were people clapping. I don't know if it got a standing ovation yeah. or what, but the first showing that place fucking erupted. We went when to that the premiere down. and it was nuts. And uh, you know there was a guy who was sitting next to us and went to the bathroom, and he was in the bathroom. The, almost that entire scene and we were like dude i kind of wanted to stop and explain everything to him but i didn't care that much it was it was it was what i wanted from it was this great. and i even as kylo was making that choice yeah you're kind of teased a little you bit you get I the guess, idea but... that that you know he he might kill ray in my head i knew he was not going to he was going to kill Snoke. I knew that that was what was going to happen. Yeah. Whether or not I was able to pre- predict that that was going to happen and other people were able to pre- predict that too, I don't know. But in my head, I kind of knew that that was where we were going before he started twitching his hands and moving and everything because I could see it on his face. And I think that that's just an, uh, a testament to Adam Driver's acting in that he knew what he was supposed to be portraying and that's what he portrayed to me. I got that. Yeah. I got no, that. I mean, overall, it was a really cool scene. And yeah. I mean, we could sit here and go over this like all day. But we could. We was, could because it was so awesome. It was. It, it was so a great scene. So Snoke let's, dies, and I'm okay with it. So you know, you don't get much answers with Snoke, but the biggest thing coming out of Seven is who's Snoke, and then the other thing was who are Ray's parents. But but okay, in the original trilogy, did anybody ask who? Did anybody say, you know, who's Snoke? Who's who's Luke's parents? Who's this? Who's that? You know, all of this stuff. Did anybody ask these questions? Well, they were wondering who the fuck. If Vader was telling the sure. truth. Okay. But did you get answers to every question that you asked in the original trilogy? No. No. No, you didn't. 
And that's the thing. You're not going to get every every answer, uh, every question answered now. Right yeah. now, it's not going to happen. And so I think that everybody just needs to. So we're we're basically take told a break that and uh, that's it. We're, we're we're told that Ray's parents were junk dealers, drunks. Yeah. That basically sold her for uh, booze and a ride off the planet. Mm-hmm. Simple as that. And, and that's, that's okay. fine. That's fucking fine with me. So that was a question that was asked. You know, obviously, who are Ray's parents? Well, that's what I said. And with the Snoke thing. Yeah. Who's Snoke? Who are Ray's who are parents? Ray's Those parents? are the two biggest that fucking questions. That was a question questions. that was, a- that was yeah. asked, and you know what? It was answered. And it may not have been the answer that everybody wanted, but it was answered. It was fine. It was like, okay. Exactly. And and they might, they might, JJ might come back and fucking change it in nine to where it's someone of significance. But with that, it was fine. Honestly, was I fine. kind of hope he doesn't, because I'm okay with it being no- nobody. Because that sets, that is kind of what this whole movie was about. In that the force doesn't pick and choose, the force doesn't just pick the rich and the famous. Yeah, you know it, it's it's just in you. Yeah. The ability to harness that is in you. Whether you're a stable boy or you're a fucking politician, it doesn't matter. Yeah, it's there, yeah. It, and it's going to always be there for generations and generations and generations. Mm-hmm. Long after the Skywalker line is gone. <laughs> That's where we're going to be. So, yeah, we can get in, the, like, some of our favorite parts, like the cinematography on Crate yeah. is fucking beautiful. Yeah. Like, everything about Crate, the, the the red and the white and the textures and uh, the idea that it was an old rebel base from mm-hmm. the past, that that was really Well, didn't you say cool. that uh, in the Leia book? That's, it, it's in the Leia book, and, yeah. And the Leia book, the cover is red and white. Mm-hmm. So I think that well, that's... all of the stories of they call it the journey to the Last Jedi, like yeah. Leia book, and then even the Legends of Luke Skywalker. It's all red and white. I didn't the... realize that it was red and white. I only I had only looked at Leia, but that makes sense too. Yeah. But just the red and white combo. It's together, the theme of is... the Last Jedi, especially yeah. red. Red is the theme. I mean, it's in the logo. Yeah. It's not yellow. It's it's red. So. I, I'm okay. I'm okay with that because you're seeing this contrast and that's kind of what the entire movie is about is this contrast. The contrast between the things. But in the end, there really is no distinct line. Well, I think with Crate too, how it's white on the surface and red underneath, I think that's not foreshadowing, but just kind of letting you know that everything you see on the outside it's not really... Well, doesn't DJ say the same thing? What? Don't judge the package. Don't judge the package? Don't judge the package, dude. Like, don't judge the package. I think that's what this movie is all about, is what you're actually seeing isn't the truth. You have to Be patient. Interpret. Take your time. You have to interpret everything as what it is, and, and lots of things have meanings. Dude, you know what's next? I am super fucking happy that women are finally taking over the Star Wars franchise. I'm happy about that. I'm happy that we have uh, Ray, who is a fucking badass female lead, who has her issues and has her faults, and who really believes truly and honestly that she can help. I like that we have Leia, who is, uh, I could see actually her fingers in the movie Mm -hmm. were swollen, and that told me she was probably drinking. At the time, in real life, you know, obviously. Mm-hmm. So, you know, even though we have this strong general princess, we know that in real life she had her demons. But she could still bring it and show us that you could be strong and you could be a woman and lead. And I think Holdo did the same thing. And we got to and see like, others. We cool. got to see others. That was cool. Yeah. Um, I, I like that, you know, we got Rose, who was also very strong. I like that she's dragging Finn along by his foot, trying to get him out of there and doing what she can. I like that she turned that fucking, that whatever it was called, like mono speeder, to right towards him to stop him because she fucking wanted to save him. Yeah, I mean, that that's... That was important. All of those things are very important to me. That, that That's another thing, too. They're like, a lot of people are saying, oh, there wasn't any character development with Finn. The guy was getting ready to kill himself and just fly his shit to straight in. To save people. To save people. How's that not character development? What? And at the same time, it developed Rose. <laughs> it did. You get to see where she, where she's willing to go and how far she's willing to go. I mean, the whole love line thing, it was maybe a little bit too soon. 
But is it? I mean, I, if you're if you are in a situation, a perilous situation with someone, you almost instantly oh, have know. to create. Like, like I would have, I would have been okay with just the kiss. Yeah. Not the one thing. But other than that, I mean. But I you know, know, we do actually get that she talks about how he was a hero mm-hmm. and she was already kind of idolizing him as it was. Yeah. So she kind of already had an idea about who he was before she even met him. Mm-hmm. So I can understand that. But I have to really commend everybody who put this movie together and say, you know, I felt like me as, as a woman, I felt like there was lots of awesome, strong female leads. Uh, it was pretty awesome to see. I believe Kelly Marie Tran is Korean. Am I correct in that? Mm-hmm. Uh, it was awesome to see, you know, a lot of different um, cultures represented. Yeah. Uh, I, re- I really like that. I like that a lot. Uh, in addition to that, I really liked the cinematography. Yeah, it was beautiful. Uh, I think the colors were great and crate was awesome. And the red, the white. Okay, so when Luke and Kylo are getting ready to show down, the fact that... <laughs> The fact that fucking Kylo runs his foot, like, remember when he slides after he fucking goes to cut? Yeah. And he slides, and there's that slide of red? That's fucking cool. <laughs> well, with Luke, you don't get that. You don't get so that. So that's, like, Luke. one of the first hints that something's a little off. Except that, let me tell you, I actually figured it out, like, when he took his hood off or whatever, and he's sitting in front of Leia. Yeah. And it's like, did he join fucking Harry This is where she's going to tell you that she's better than me because she no, figured it out before I did. No, I didn't say I that. Did. I didn't say that. No. What I'm saying is, uh, he, it looked like he used just for men, and it yeah. didn't make any sense to me. So I figured out that there was something. And he also was using a lightsaber that was destroyed, like, five minutes earlier. So. Well, that is also true. Yeah, that is. Also but true. that whole scene with the force projection, it was, it was beautiful, and it took a second time, second viewing for me to appreciate exactly what the hell was going on. So, what do you think of that whole scene, the whole Luke Skywalker force projection death scene? I thought it was cool. Yeah. Um, I thought that it expanded on the use of the force and how we can harness that. Um. I feel that it was kind of already foreshadowed and set up when we had Kylo and yeah. Rey talking to each other. When Kylo says, how are you can't be doing this because it could be killing you. Right. They pretty much told us that that could happen and that it was totally plausible and that it would kill you. So it set that up for the end. Yeah, I mean, and then the twin sons, the sunset, and him dying and just... I don't know. Was, you killed Luke Skywalker. No, you it was my it, the the whole thing was like really poetic and beautiful, and uh, that's the biggest, most controversial thing in this movie mm-hmm. that people were just fucking pissed off. Mm-hmm. And I didn't want to see Luke Skywalker go out like a chump, and he didn't. I wanted to see Luke Skywalker go out peacefully, gracefully, and on his own terms. He totally did. He totally but guess did. what? You're going to get more Luke Skywalker in 9. That's, That's the glory of it. That's the glory of it. Is that with with the lure of the lore of the Force, you get the opportunity to bring back characters who are dead because of Force ghosts. Yeah. Because there is this opportunity. He, he's not gone. And he says it. And we're, we're, we're going to need Luke more than ever in 9. Yeah. L- Luke's going to be like, that's going to be our guy. That's going to be, you know, that's where we're going to get our knowledge, our training from. So. Yeah. I agree. Absolutely. I totally it, agree. it was it was beautiful. Like, it, especially the second time. It was just. Well, when when Luke and Leia finally come back together. Um, yeah, a lot of people are pissed off about that, too, because it wasn't a true reunion. Because it wasn't an actual. What is a true reunion? It wasn't an actual physical uh, reunion. Okay. So it was a force projection. How force many, projected. How many people? Like how many people have lost family members who live far away and they don't get to see them before they die? Yeah. And how amazing would that be if you could have a force, a force reunion with your dying family member before they die? Yeah, that would, that would be amazing. That would be pretty fucking cool. It'd be great. So I mean, there are a lot of things that happened and didn't happen that could have happened and should have happened and would have been fun if it happened. But if you continue to throw a fit and complain about what well, that's you got, what we do. We complain about everything. Isn't that true, though? Um, I I am sad, clearly, that Luke died, but I'm also kind of concerned that they killed Luke in this movie because we can't bring Leia back next movie, so what are... What? I don't know. But 
I I feel that it was a very um, justified and organic way to send Luke off. I didn't want to see him hero. go out and be killed in a battle. I didn't want that. No. I didn't want that at all. No. I didn't want to see him die of old no. age. He he is his character itself is self sacrificial. So for him to self sacrifice was not only indicative of his, his character in general, yeah. but it proved to ev- to me anyway. I don't know if it proved to you, but it proved how at one with the force he was. Yes. Because he was able to not only project himself, but to understand that this is going to end me. And I'm okay with it ending me. And when you see him not die, he didn't die. He vanished. Ascended. He went into the force. He yeah. became everything. Just like Yoda and Obi-Wan did. All you're left was a robe floating away. Oh, God. It when was that, beautiful. When that floated away in the wind, I was like, there he goes. Yeah. Well, that's pretty much it. So let's get in the shit that we didn't like. No, that's not it. Oh, jeez. Oh, no, that's not it. Because you're missing one pivotal point. What? Luke dies. And then. Oh, I forgot about it. Yeah. And then. My the favorite part of the movie thing, I forgot. The biggest thing, what we've set this whole movie up for, is Broom Boy. Broom Boy. And I fucking cuffed the shit right away. I, I didn't so the first time. I didn't that. the first time. I was so excited about it. I was so excited. So at the end of the movie, you know, you have this, the, you go back to, to, uh, to Canto Bite. Yeah. You know, you've got the kids who were oppressed and they're telling Little the story. Boys. They're telling the story stable about kids. Luke Skywalker and how wonderful it is. And, and basically, Leia says right before, you know, we have everything we need to yeah. restart this rebellion. And what you need, in my opinion, is hope. It's hope, yeah. And hope is bred in the, our next generations of, of people coming up and going to take over. And I feel that this entire movie kind of told us that you can be nobody. You can be somebody. Yeah. You you can find the force wherever you are. And that could include a fucking Father Year's table. <laughs> and that's okay. And, you know, broom boy, take it or leave it. It was one of my favorite parts of the movie. Totally. Especially after seeing it the second time. Yes. Like, not even seeing him, like, grab the broom with the force. I didn't even see that the first time. But just him, and he's holding the broom like a lightsaber, and he's looking off in the into the, the sky. Stars. And you see the ring mm-hmm. that Rose gave him. You're like, holy shit. And, and then after seeing yeah. it the second time, seeing him use the force, putting all that shit together with everything i already seen, I was like, dude, that made the movie... But it's not the big spectacular shot of something going into hyperspace. Or... But it is because he's watching the stars and you see the fucking ship yeah. Yeah, zoom he's... by. Yeah. So I, I feel like what we were seeing was the next gener- a, a new hope. A Maybe. new hope in the galaxy has has been created Maybe. in this next generation that's coming up. And, Broom boy, dude. Yeah. Without Ray being no one. That broom boy couldn't could not be what he is yeah. or what he could possibly. I, be. I don't I don't think that broom boy will ever be a character in Star Wars. I think no. it was it just could not a be, no. uh, what would you call that? Like a symbol, like a uh, it's a symbology. <laughs> I don't know what you would call it, like an example of what's going on throughout the a, galaxy. A metaphor. Of like, maybe it just wasn't Ray awakening. Maybe it was a lot of people being force awakened. Yeah. Or force woke. Maybe. Maybe. Be woke. Be fucking force woke, folks. Here it comes. (laughs) Maybe those scales had tipped toward the dark side and we need more light side users. Maybe. Maybe that's. Maybe that's what's going on. But it was definitely. It it was beautiful. The end of the movie was beautiful. I know a lot of people are bashing it, but. I liked it. I, I didn't have a problem with it at all. It actually, I actually made me really liked it. made me it. really fucking emotional. Like yes. the whole thing because you go from like the Luke shit, yeah, and you're trying to recover from that, and then you see this. Yeah, I always have a thing with kids. I don't know what the fuck it is. It, it made me feel like being a kid again, and <coughs> seeing it for the first time, and imagining that you could grab the force, dude. You, you can it do reminded it. me with like my flashlight, right? But, and I think I still have it. The the shitty like seventies eighties. <laughs> 
yellow <laughs> flashlight. Bright yellow you, flashlight. You turn off all the lights and it looked like a lightsaber. And you just, I don't know. It just, that's what it was. Dude, and you, dude your fucking shitty up action, top. Your shitty action figure of Luke Skywalker. Right? And I think that's what was awesome about it because Ryan Johnson is a fan. Yeah. For anybody to, uh, to sit there and call him uh, not a fan, uh, you need to watch the Star Wars show. To where they give the guy a vintage AT-AT <laughs> in a box and he can barely control himself with the motion that it was given to him. So don't sit there and tell me that he pissed on the franchise, he killed the franchise, he ruined it, whatever. I read somewhere that somebody said, did you even see a Star Wars movie? Yeah. Clearly don't, he has. Don't give me that. <laughs> but at the end of the day, you have to move the franchise forward you do we can't yeah. sit there and dwell on darth vader for the rest of this franchise right you can't sit there and dwell on luke skywalker for the rest of this fan franchise if that's what you want to do then we might as well shut the franchise down now <coughs> characters okay. of the past can be stepping stones to the future and that was really prolific. we'll get we'll, we'll get kylo ren we'll get ray fuck we 15 years from now we'll we'll get a. Uh, you know, episode 15, Broom Boy. You know, I, I don't know. I Whatever don't know. it is. Whatever it is, what we are seeing. The stable strikes back. I don't know. What we're, we're seeing in this movie is <coughs> the force is apathetic. It doesn't care who yeah. you are. And war doesn't care who you are. It doesn't matter. Yeah. You could be anybody. You could be nothing. It doesn't matter. They will fucking blow you up the same way. It doesn't matter. No, it was it was, and, it was a beautiful with, with with that ending, I felt that what they were showing us was the spark of hope to build that rebellion, and that's literally what Leia was trying to say. All right. So, what do you think about the didn't likes? Because there was a, there was a few things that we didn't like. Clearly. Well. There's one scene in particular you didn't care for, and I was kind of like, yeah, whatever, take it or leave it. Uh, two things in this movie, and then one that I thought about right before we went on. Uh, first thing, I don't think, and just like in uh, The Force Awakens, R2 was not used enough. Yeah. With the exception of the projection of Leia, and I mean, that's cool and all. 3PO is used quite a bit more than The Force Awakens, but these are droids. These are our. OG droids. Right? These are we spent the first like quarter of the movie with 3PO and R2 in a new hope. They can tell a story. Mm -hmm. You know? And I just I, I, I don't know. And especially well, not only that they're I mean, aside from Anthony Daniels, I mean they're really not gonna die. No. Like and we can keep R2 going for many, many don't, movies. Don't don't get me wrong. I like BB eight. I do. Yeah. But we kind of push BB eight. I just feel like the original droids are kind of being pushed to the side for newer droids, BB-90 and BB-8. It's just, it's it, it's it's kind of sad. Didn't I, Kylo Ren say it, though? What? Didn't he say it? What? You have to get rid of the past. Oh, well, I know, but I just, <laughs> to, to me, like, like how I said before, like the Mount Rushmore of Star Wars, yeah. R2-D2 is there. Because I think at the end, you're going to find out that R2-D2 was telling this whole fucking story from the beginning. Because he's been to, through he's it been all. Through it all. He's and he hasn't it. had his fucking memory wiped at all. He's going to be the storyteller of everything. Uh, the other thing, and this was a big fucking grievance with me in The Force Awakens. There is absolutely almost no use of original aliens. From the original trilogy whatsoever. Yeah. I don't see Rodians. I don't see Athorians. I don't see any. I don't see Biths. I, I, I don't see anything. I, I, I. Nothing. I'm not seeing any type of original alien. It's cool. Make aside, new... from, aside from Akbar. Well, yeah. <laughs> but I'm talking about. I mean. Like on you had, White, you no... had two opportunities. You had Maz's Castle. Okay. And you had Canto Bight. Just give me, give me a, a a Rodian over there. Give me a give me a Hammerhead over there. Something shit. Give me a Prune face. I don't fucking care. Give me a Yak face. I don't. Give me something. A throwback to the original trilogy. But instead, you get all these new species, and that's cool. But just give me a little bit more, and that's kind of frustrating. Yeah. Um, I can't remember the name of the the species, 
but it's what Elo Asti was, mm -hmm. the X-Wing yeah. pilot. Uh, there's a new character, same species, that is in The Last Jedi. He's a pilot as well. And then you also see a couple more in The Force Awakens. You know, now that you bring it up, that reminded me. I wished that they would have made a clear distinction because it took me a minute to to recognize he, that it wasn't Eloasti. He has he has a name. Yeah, they, and they, they just released used a card. it because because I honestly was yeah. like, wait, he died. Oh, he yeah, died. Yeah, 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 he died. And I was like, wait a minute, did they die? It's just it's frustrating. And it was cool seeing Neen Nam. I mean, that's cool. Who doesn't like old pussy lips? You know, I mean, yeah, vagina head. We, we we love that guy in Akbar yeah. and stuff. But like, I don't know. Just give me something. Just I don't know. Like. Just something. Just doesn't even have to be big. Just give me a fucking Rodian. That's all I need. I just need something like that. I don't know. It's just it, it's frustrating. And then uh, <clears throat> the one of the biggest things I thought about right before we went on is Snap Wexley, played by played by Greg Grunberg in The Force Awakens, who's a friend of J.J. Abrams. He's not in this fucking movie, and he was one of the biggest like pilots of the Resistance, other than Poe. In The Force Awakens. And he is nowhere to be seen in this movie. Hmm. You need to have some type of consistency. If a director is going to have friends that he's going to bring on board. And they're going to be main characters. They need to be in it. They need to stay. Or if you're going to kill him. Tell us he There died. hasn't been it's any uh, story. What happened to Snap Wexley or oh. anything. I but actually didn't even notice that. Uh, well, you brought it I didn't earlier. notice it until this morning. You I was thinking about it. I was like, where's that? Morning and I was like, who? Because I'm going to tell I you just, right I now, the, the reason why I thought of that, Snap Wexley is like a big part of the Aftermath trilogy. Mm. He's a huge part of it. And Did I got... die in the books or anything? <coughs> I, I got to thinking about it and I'm like, where the fuck is he? Yeah. Um. So that's the thing. If a director has friends that they're going to bring on and have them be main characters... Uh, they need to definitely sign on for the next movie, or you need to kill them off mm -hmm. by the time that movie is done. So, <laughs> JJ is coming back for nine, and if he goes to do this movie and he Snap Wexley's in it, back on. <gasps> there's going to be a big continuity fucking error there because you are made to believe at the end of the Last Jedi that that is it of the Resistance. And I didn't see Greg Grunberg at all in yeah. that fucking crowd. No. That's going to fucking piss me off. Because yeah. you can't do favors to friends just to make them happy and put them in fucking Star Wars and do a disservice to the fans. Mm -hmm. That kind of fucking pisses me off. Especially when you're going to go like big like that. I I'm yes. all for... Make them a throwaway character. Sure. Kill them off. Whatever. Do it. But don't let do them it. survive. Yeah. Or if they survive, tell us that, you know, we're not coming back for that character. Exactly. And it... Uh, let's see. Simon, I caught you. I Pegg. caught you. Simon Pegg. We don't have to go back. We don't have to go back to Jakku. We don't ever have to see him. We know what happened again. to Encarp We We get it. He's probably still fucking, you know, doing non Plut shit. And Speaking that's Speaking of shit that uh, I could not find, and if you guys heard it, let us know because we didn't... I have a bad feeling about this. Where is that? I didn't hear that at all. And you know what? Movie. I'm going to have to give props because neither one of us figured it out. Our child, yeah. our I don't like Star Wars. Yes, I'm using air quotes. I don't like Star Wars 13-year-old daughter. That was the first thing she said to us. No, was, I have a bad feeling about this. I no, I got it. a bad feeling about this. Whatever. It's not in there. And it's oh. been in every single Star Wars movie. And it's not in there. And I just hope that that wasn't like uh, fuck you to the fans because mm -hmm. I hope not. That's kind of a big deal. It's got to be in there. It's just it's something you got to do. Yeah. But did you did you hear the scream? I didn't hear. I did scream. not hear the Wilhelm scream. It might but, have been in there, but that's more of like a subtle thing that. Yeah, I I didn't hear. It. I didn't notice that I was wondering if you. I understand. did. I paid attention to almost mm -hmm. every fucking piece of dialogue in that movie. And I One piece of dialogue it. I did not get to hear and I was pretty sad about it is when she's getting the whispers to go check the oh, tree can, for the text. I'm fucking deaf. And Everybody, I well, I tried to hear it. The first time I was trying really hard to hear it. And the second time we went to see it, I was like, okay, I've got to pay attention. i got to know <laughs> what this says. And at that time, literally in that 45 seconds, minute, minute 15, everyone was opening chips. Somebody was eating ice. Somebody coughed. 
blowing their nose, opening their fucking Velcro wallet. Someone was opening their mail? I I really don't understand. There was like a leaf blower. I don't really know what happened, but I couldn't hear anything. I just want to scream out in the theater like, shut the fuck up. I want to hear what's being whispered. So I can't wait for the DVD so we can get it and slow it down and listen to what exactly is being said because I feel like, I honestly feel like a lot of opinions might be changing between now and a few weeks after the DVD comes out, when people get to see it more often, Maybe. when they get to come back to it, they get to revisit, they get to really break apart and find out what's going on, things might change. Yeah. One scene that I could completely do away with, and it's sad because one of uh, one of my new favorite characters is the Maz scene. Yeah. When they call Maz Kanata, like on FaceTime, and we're doing our uh, let's talk to Maz and get an idea of where we can find this special code breaker to get us on the ship. I get it. We understand. They track him through hyperspace. We need to find out how we did it. How can we undo it? All this stuff. I get it. We need this information. Yeah. Why does it have to come from Maz? It has to come from Maz because this is a franchise. And in order to sell Maz toys for this movie, we have to include her in the movie in some way. So they include her in this way that's completely unorganic, doesn't fit, it feels odd, there's no reason for her to be there, and even as a person who liked the movie and is going to give it a decent rating, I want that to go Going away. back to the JJ thing, that was a JJ character. He he based her on an old teacher. That was... <laughs> really? It was an old teacher of his, and uh, even the name, uh, her name on set was Rose. That was her name. And the name of the teacher was Rose. Oh. Um, yeah. And I think that this is something that Ryan Johnson just wasn't a fan of. And like, nah, I'm fucking, whatever. I'll throw it in a little bit, but I'm not going to, she's not going to be a big part of the movie. And I think that's what happened. And honestly, if that was the case. Don't do it. Take that scene out and just let J.J. bring her back in mind. Oh, that's fine. You can go a movie. I would be totally you can, okay with you, that. You, you, you can go a whole movie without having a character come back. Uh, especially like a minor character like that, that's well, fine. I mean, we, they did it with Jabba. Exactly. I mean, if you're gonna, exactly. you know, if special editions. I mean, even without the special editions, you mentioned Jabba in A New Hope. You don't see Jabba in Empire Strikes Back, and then you see Jabba in Return of the Jedi. It wasn't a big deal. They could have done this with her. It just seemed kind of like it was. It was. It was hokey. It was. It felt like a video game mission mm-hmm. kind of thing. I. I, I wonder if it, it it took me out for a minute. It did, and it I, I was I, and I didn't think that that type of scene would take me out of the movie. Usually, yeah. like horrible CGI, like the Borgola or the Raftars, take me out because when I see the Raftars or the Borgola, that's a piss break to me. Yeah, the Moz thing uh, that's my piss break because it just it was unnecessary. It doesn't serve anything. Right? They could have went like even you said. You're like. Poe calls an old buddy that he knew from like flight school or something. They could have done something. We don't. We don't know enough about Poe to <coughs> say that he wouldn't know somebody like. Yeah. This. And and why did Poe call her? If anybody, Finn should have called her because Poe has absolutely no interaction with Maz in the Force Awakens. How at does Poe even know Maz? Like that's that was one thing that really threw so, me yeah, out. Call an old friend. Yeah. And it's yeah. like what? That one scene. It was could have been completely taken out of the. Story I'm with you. I, I don't know if it everything. was like a toy thing. I doubt it, but it was just to get more. It was a franchise thing. I mean, we know that that JJ was an executive producer, so there's a possibility he was like, "Mm, let's push Maz. Yeah, get some Maz in it. Let's fucking throw it. Let's fucking bam! (laughs) You know, with some Maz, but I. I, JJ Lagasse. Bam! There it goes. Uh, I I feel. (laughs) like. I feel like the salty guy that's just fucking dropping a bunch of Maz heads. Yeah. Uh, I feel like that could have been completely taken out. It was, think, it, it, was, it was funny, like, with the whole, uh, she's like, yeah, he's good. He's good everything. He's good. And when they like, show you up, old whore. She's an old whore. You're a thousand-year-old whore. You you're fucking Maz Chewbacca an and you're old, fucking around with this guy. You know Moss is an old hoe. You know it's true. This guy and with this Walt Disney mustache that looks like the, the husband from fucking Double Jeopardy. He actually, he actually has. Uh, he has His name's a movie like Justin career. Thoreau. It is, yeah. and uh, he plays in a lot of other things. Uh, and he's actually a very handsome guy. So the fact that she's like, "Yeah, he's good at that," <laughs> is cool and it's fine. But I feel like it completely threw everything out. Yeah, um, it w- was not part of the uh, the whole broad story. 
and uh, that could have gone. I yeah, a couple uh, cameos. I guess the princes are in the movie somewhere. We'll have to wait uh, to find out about that exactly where they were. They were supposed to play troopers. I don't uh, know. There was supposed to be Tom Hardy uh, seen with Finn. That was not in the movie. I'm 100 percent that got cut. Yeah. And then uh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, who's uh, an all-time all ultimate fan, <laughs> a voiceover. I'm pretty sure he did the Beach Bum guy. It's possible. I haven't looked it up. I should look it up. I'm yeah. almost positive. And then I was hearing on Collider that the uh, little uh, guy that was putting the coins in BB-8, uh, Mark Hamill, did the voice for really? that Really? The burpee? Yeah. The little burpee, the burpee guy? guy yeah. That was something that I could have not... <coughs> so not that scene, but later when he shoots... BB-8 shoots all this, yeah. the coins out, and he's yeah. like... Yeah. I get it. But you know what? It's for the kids, so I'm going to kind of let don't, that one slide. That's the thing, dude. I just, it's for the kids. There were a lot I'm, of comedic scenes that came through. <laughs> so there were a few that I was like, mm, that seems out of place. It's not quite Star Wars. And then there were others that I was like, good God, is that textbook Star Wars humor? <laughs> is that textbook Star Wars humor or what? Yeah. And I'm totally, I'm okay with the uh, folding for Hux. Yeah. I, I want a I didn't shirt get, that I, says holding for hugs. I think it's hilarious. I, I, <laughs> I, I, I didn't get Jar Jar Stefan and Poop. No. And I didn't get an EOP uh, farting. There you go. So I'm good. I'm, I'm good. good with I'm okay with it. I'm really okay with pretty much everything else. I love the, the Hux Finn, thing. It Finn, was funny. squirting Finn. Fucking, that was funny. That was, was Star Wars humor. Uh, you know, I, I feel like a lot of it was well-placed. Um... Some was a little hardcore humor, but you're looking at a movie that is pretty dark in comparison to a lot of other Star Wars you movies. You needed those. So you kind of need that yeah. that comedic element coming in. And I think that a lot of people were nervous about the Porgs. They weren't even... They were whatever. They I, were I, cute I heard, as hell. I still don't know if you think they're cute. I don't know. They're cute, but I, I mean, really, honestly, I could give or take the, the Porgs. I think that what happens more often, though... Is that the fandom as a whole makes a big deal about specific things? Yeah, they were starting to freak out. They thought they were gonna just take over, right? You know, be but the new. But there's Jar other things too that they make a big deal about. The fandom made a big deal about who could raise parents for it. The fandom made a big deal about Snoke. The fandom made a big deal about Porgs. Yeah. The fandom does all this. Porgs didn't and bother then, me. And then when it comes down to the movie, though. We're like, well, what about this? And what about that? And it's like, well, you came up with that. <laughs> the movies didn't tell you that. Yeah. Your fucking you almost Star like, Wars brain came You almost up with watched that. this movie, like, believing the shit that you came up with. In your mind? Yeah. <laughs> and then you start thinking about it, you're like, well, they never said or did that. It's just everything I've been watching yeah. and talking about for the exactly. last two years. Exactly. And you know what? It Star Wars does? never did that. You know what it brings me to? And and any other horror girl worth their salt will know exactly what I'm talking about. In that Hitchcock made everyone think that they saw fucking uh, Psycho, nudity in Psycho. And they didn't. Yeah. You never even, you never saw nudity in Psycho. You didn't see her at all. But they made you think you did. And that's what is happening is that the fandom has developed this, this, these blinders that they have thought of these things and it's a blinder of theories and the things that they think have happened and they think they're going to happen. And that is unfortunate because it's kind of stopped anything else from coming in. Yeah. Well, I think the biggest thing, and before we close, I'll say it. I think that when you, uh, <clears throat> You know, when you think about Star Wars, I know that majority of us saw Star Wars when we were kids. And you have to remember where you were at your time in your life when you saw that movie. You didn't watch that movie for the first time when you were in your middle 30s or early 40s or whatever. Um, so I think by sitting there shitting on a course direction and... I mean, let's be honest. We all thought Star Wars was dead. It's back. It's it's like renaissance of, yeah. of, of Star Wars. Um, to shit on the franchise, um, just because you're not happy with the way it's going, not share it with your children, and just uh, basically pound the original trilogy down their throat, I think is unfair because I think the kids would, they, they would enjoy and get a real kick out of what's going on in these movies. Um, 
they're good. I, I don't have an issue with that. I honestly, I, I, I think that The Last Jedi, it's in my top three, and that's saying a lot. Yeah. I mean, I have a lot to choose from now. We have a lot of Star Wars content. I know it's just going to be more Star Wars content. Yeah. I think you have a really good point. It's going to get to the point to where you can't rank them anymore. No. You can't. That, you just can't. And that's fine. You'll just, just have to remember the original trilogy in, in for what it was. Yeah. And I, you have a very good point in that we are showing this to a new generation. Yeah. A generation that not only is expecting CGI... But wants that type of story. They want these big, over the top, extravagant things. And we have to expand because our beloved characters are dying in real life. Well, <laughs> there is no force in real life to bring these characters. Well, much back. in the same way, if we don't, you know, if we don't introduce this stuff to our children, and we don't share it, much like our characters, Star Wars will die. Yeah. There will be no interest in this franchise, and it will die, and uh, or it'll become like a secondary property mm -hmm. to where you just get like shitty like B movies about it because it's not respected anymore. Yeah, and I don't want Star Wars to ever get like that. I, I I'd much rather have a Star Wars film every three to five years than constantly just have them pumped out and yeah. uh, have it get like watered down and there's something about waiting for Star Wars and speculating and having fun with it and the build up and then uh, just the camaraderie like with other fans and having a good time yeah. that just makes it great and I think that maybe we're starting to lose that a little bit yeah. that maybe Clinging too um, much to the past. We're a little too serious about this, and we don't know how to have fun with it anymore. Luckily, I haven't, because... Because we have a child who is getting into it, and we can see it for the first time through her. Yeah, I mean, I still <laughs> have fun it. with it. I have my Star Wars yeah. room. I get up early on the weekends. I'm the first one in line to go get my Star Wars toys and see what there is, and that makes me feel good that I can do that. Um, I don't want to ever have a day come to where uh, I pass by the Star Wars toy aisle or the Star Wars t-shirt uh, rack and yeah. I don't at least take a look. The day that I do that, I guess it is dead because I consider myself to be a huge fan. Yeah. And I love it. I, you know, I do. And like, it scares me because I think about certain, like other, uh, like fandoms, that I have like other franchises that have became garbage. <laughs> I'm not going to name any names, but other, other properties. It's sad. Yeah. And I don't ever want star Wars to be like that. So I get emotional when I think about that because I don't want it to ever die, but I have a feeling that if it dies, we're going to be the ones to kill it. Yeah. I don't think it's going to be done. Uh, from the outside, I don't think it, or from the inside, I don't think it'll be a company that kills it. I think that we'll be the ones to kill it by criticizing it, not exposing our kids to it, and trying to compare every single movie to three films that were made over f or 40 years ago. And I think that's really unfair that the times have changed, people have changed, ideas have changed. Yeah. That's. That's important. Our kids, our kids do not expect the same things from movies that we did when we were kids, or yeah. that our parents did when they were kids. Yeah. And I think it's important that we continue to grow as a fandom because Star Wars has an opportunity to send a message that wouldn't normally be received. Yeah. Um, and I, I, my hope for the future of Star Wars is that it continues to grow. In its message that you can have hope and you can persevere and you can defeat evil or whatever right. it is. And that there will always be some kind of oppressive thing over you, but you can fight for what you yeah, want. Yeah, absolutely. 
And I feel like that is the most important thing that you can take from Star Wars. And I think that this movie by itself gives you that idea that that is there for yeah. everybody's taking. It's hope. Hope it's... is hope is universal. Yeah. It can be available for anyone and everything matter, at any time. It doesn't matter if it's, you know, a boy with blonde hair on Tatooine. Right. Or, you know, an orphan on Jakku. It doesn't matter. Those are our heroes. Right. Or a little black boy that was fucking kidnapped and forced to, into slavery. Yeah, exactly. It I mean, doesn't those... matter. You could be nothing or anything in the same moment, and it's your choices that make a difference. And I think that people just... Ah, there's so much hate. There, I there's, feel there, that there's so much hate. this is what happens. We have a 40-year-old person viewing a movie as a 40-year-old person. Yeah. And what needs to happen is... We need to start watching these movies as a 10-year-old. Yeah. And that anything is possible and everything is available to us and the universe is out there for us. And that's what Star Wars is trying to tell you. The yeah. universe is there for you. Yeah, be you idealistic. Be idealistic yeah. over your toys. <laughs> don't open your toys. Don't let your mom make don't sure let your mom yard make, sell your toys. <laughs> make, make sure they're always minty fresh. Yeah. But don't be idealistic with the franchise. Mm -hmm. Except newer, broader horizons, new ideas, uh, new characters that might not fit into yeah. your mold of what a Star Wars character might be. But that again is your mold. That's not my mold, that's not your mold. And we all have to kind of come together as a fandom and accept that as is life, yeah. we all see things from a different point of view. Yeah. And that's Star Wars. Certain point and, of view. And that being said, my certain point of view, I will rank as Sally B's. So, Salacious B Crumbs, what is your rating, sir? Um, it's not, it's not the perfect Star Wars movie. No. But it gave me, I'm not going to say it gave me everything I wanted or needed. But it made me feel complete in a story. Yeah. And uh, I was invested in almost every character. And it hit a lot of notes. I wanted a little bit more, more nostalgic things. Um, but I got to give it four, 4. 5 out of 5 Sally Bees. Um, just because I wasn't expecting any of this. It didn't go in any direction that I thought it was going to go. But when I walked out, I was like, holy shit, what the hell did I just see? Yeah. And that's something to me. That's, mm -hmm. like I said, it doesn't have you looking in the past as you're looking in the future. That's important. That right there is the key. To this and that's movie. what Star Wars is. We have to look to the future now. Um, it did Luke Skywalker justice, I feel. It touched on the prequels. It touched on the original trilogy. I liked all the character development. I thought that it pushed Kylo Ren into a direction of being probably one of the most, not evil, because I don't think we have that anymore, evil. Probably complex, um, like misconstrued versions of a villain that will ever get in Star Wars. And I think that those villains kind of reflect real life. Yeah. And what real life quote unquote villains look like. Villains, I think what Adam Driver did an interview with somebody, I can't think of who it was, and he said, villains don't know that they're evil. No, and that's the thing with uh, Darth Vader. He did a lot of things out of anger and hate and regret. He just did it they don't for know the dark evil. side. They think that I think right. that Kylo Ren is not all right up here and I think that he is he doing some therapy. what he thinks is right so four out of five for me uh this is definitely a Star Wars movie like if I'm looking at my movies I'm like eh, which one am I gonna watch that'll definitely be one I'll be like yeah what's that one maybe that one but I'll probably go to this one so I liked it yeah. and it was quick it was fast paced it was fun even though it was two and a half hours long it was it oh, was it goes, fast it goes for by, me it goes and by it, quick. it's cut it's cut in a way that 
is popular right now where you've got little scenes of this and this. Short and this attention thing. span. But yeah. it, it goes quickly so you're back at what you were worried about and thinking about and you're not waiting like I said, it's not Glenn under a fucking dumpster. I mean, right. we, we're not waiting forever trying to get back to what we want. Um, I agree with like everything you just said. Uh, I feel that this is a franchise that is trying to move forward and expand. And we are either going to, as a fandom, accept it and move forward and expand too, or we're going to stay stuck where we back here. Yeah. And if you want to stay stuck, then stay stuck. That's your choice. I mean, it's totally up to whoever. It's fandom is subjective. Everybody's kind of available for their thing. I'm happy to see that my child is excited about what's coming. Where it's gone. Yeah. I'm happy that she saw this scene and with with Kylo and Rey and them fighting and this cool, the coolest lightsaber battle. And she was excited about this and that she has these characters who she can connect to and she can see are strong and who are moving forward. That's what did it for me. Progressive. That's what did it for me. There are, there are issues with this movie that should not be there. That should be changed and should be fixed. But I am not the director. I am not the, the, you know, the screenplay writer. I am not a part of that. I am a viewer who has an opinion. And in my opinion, all of the things, the issues aside, they were not big enough to sway me from what I, yeah. what I wanted from this movie. And even though I wanted certain things, I didn't get them. I got stuff I didn't even realize I needed and I got it. And the cool thing for me <laughs> is that I had a lot of expectations about the force. Yeah years long expectations that I have developed in my brain from watching Star Wars as a kid and those things came to fruition for me and I was like oh my god I'm finally justified in what I was thinking I don't feel like such an idiot and as a female who likes Star Wars sometimes you can be made to look stupid because there's guys around you who want to make you look dumb because you're a girl who likes Star Wars but I actually finally felt vindicated for once in my life that yeah. what I thought might happen happened that being said is it my favorite Star Wars movie? No. I will always and forever like Empire, which is kind of a fanboy thing. So <laughs> Empire is always my favorite. However, I am going to give this movie four Sally Bs. Cool. Four solid, strong Sally Bs. Yeah. And if we did away with the few things that kind of bothered me, I could have given it a 4.5. But as a storytelling standpoint, those things I would have chucked. I would have gotten rid of it. You don't need it. Um, you know, the cuts and edits were what they were and I accepted them for what they were and I embraced them for what they were. Would I have changed it if I had written the story? Probably. It would have been a little bit different, put together a different way. But I, I feel that there have been maybe some misconception as the timeline might be a problem. Yeah. You don't um, need to get into that. I mean, no, I just... don't. But, but, but I, I do think that, um... I think that this is a movie that is intended to bridge the gap between older generations and newer generations coming into Star Wars. Yeah. And that bridge is necessary. Did you enjoy it more in The Force Awakens? Yes. And that's saying I, a lot because <laughs> Han Solo was front and center in that. And I'm a Han girl. But uh, I... I don't think I got the same reaction from you. No. Rogue also. One, you did. I was pretty excited about Rogue One. Peter Cushing is one of my favorite actors, so sure. that was a big deal for me. But uh, this one, uh, it will be ranked there. And if you want to see our rankings, where we will actually re release our ranking video next weekend. So uh, <laughs> I'm very excited to see your rankings. Yeah. I'm, I'm excited for that one. So that has been our really long, drunk spiel about The Last Jedi. I'm tired. Um, I want Al Borland in the background with our P.O. box so you can send <laughs> us your hate mail. Uh, it, whether or not you agree with us or not, we, we really uh, honestly don't give a shit. So you're more than welcome to leave all of your comments in, down below. Uh, just don't be a douchebag because we'll delete it and yeah. do a job. And be nice to one another, for sure. Uh, no death threats, please. Uh, whether if you're, if you're a fan and you're a positive fan, feel free to uh, have a spiritual, or not a spiritual, a spirited uh, not a spiritual I'm conversation. Fucking drunk. I don't know. I'm on like my sixth. I guess, beer. dude, these fucking darkness rises um, are like an eight percent. But I've a had spirited a debate about what you thought of the Last Jedi, or just uh, where the saga is going overall. That's cool. Get a hold of us. Totally, I agree. 
I gotta get out of here. I gotta piss. I, I got know. six beers in me. Right? We've been recording, recording, recording. <laughs> uh, so, if you haven't yet, go see The Last Jedi. See it two, three, four times and let us know down in the comments what you thought about the movie. And just an FYI, clearly there's going to be spoilers in the comments. Uh, if you didn't like it, let us know. If you did like it, let us know. Follow us on Instagram and Facebook at The Official Drunks. And please always hit that subscribe button. Hit the little bell. It's going to let you know when we're live. Just going to let you know when we post random ass fucking two hour long reviews like this one. And uh, make sure that you check us out for our New Year's Spectacular. I don't know. It's just going to be two hours of us drunk and playing games. <laughs> for the drunks, this is KG. This is me. And this has been a Last Jedi review. We will see you for Solo in what, May of yep. 2000, yep, 2018? Yep, yep. Pretty excited about what that one. I'm excited. It should be fun. It'll be fun. It, it that, that's be the fun. biggest thing. It's not going to be too serious. It'll be fun. I'm excited because it's going to be fun. I'm sad because yeah. of who they cast, but, you know, whatever. We'll see. <laughs> so, we will catch you guys next time on the... Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit.